Hey, everybody. That transition couldn't have been louder. Uh, <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ron's Computer Videos. I am joined this evening by a whole mess of my friends, and I'm so glad to see all of you here. I don't know what Eric's... Oh, I know what Eric's Edge is doing, and that'll be a really cool thing to talk about. I'm glad that you reminded me. Um, <laughs> but, hey, uh, we wanted to take a few minutes this evening to go ahead and talk about um, Vintage Computer Festival Midwest. Uh, it is the 17th year that they've done it. And it happened in the year uh, 2022, just to make things super confusing for people. But I thought we would go through and uh, maybe do introductions first, and then we'll get on to business. So uh, we'll start with Jeremy, and then we'll just kind of work our, our snake our way around. Uh, hello, I'm Jeremy from uh, the YouTube channel Jeremy's Retro Bar. Um, and this is my first time at DCF. And I don't know what else you want to say. That's good. I'm Tom Barber from from being Tom Barber. Um, I don't have a YouTube channel or anything yet, um, and this is my first time at VCF Midwest. But I've been to the VCF East event about yeah ten times. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm Max Rick from Rick's Ran Retro. My second time being here, and uh, I saw a lot of new faces. I learned more about Max than I ever thought I could uh, <laughs> last time, and I've been uh, introduced to that world by around the small YouTube channel and just. It's fun meeting friends. Oh, uh, I'm Alan DeYoung. My YouTube channel barely exists, but it is called uh, it is called ADY. I have uh, been into vintage computers for a little while, but uh, definitely more so recently. And this is my first time at uh, VCF Midwest. I'm Garth Beagle. Uh, yeah, my first time at VCF Midwest too is incredible. And uh, I have a small YouTube channel at Garth Beagle and also on Twitter at, at Garth Beagle. So you can find me at all those different places. And I'm Eric from Eric's Edge, um, also a small channel. And it was my first year at VCF and it was totally awesome. You can find me on Twitter at Eric's Edge too. Awesome. Uh, I'm Steve from Mac84. My YouTube channel is Mac84. My Twitter handle is Mac84TV. If you want to hear me yell about pulling out batteries of machines. And it was my second VCF Midwest, and uh, I am poorer from it, but in a good kind of way. <laughs> Yay! And I'm Ryan. I'm Mr. Macintosh, and I talk about newer Macs, but it's no secret that I love older Macs. And usually you will find me at the show racing Adam to the free pile, and that's <laughs> that's where what happens. Thanks. And I'm Adam from Adam's Apples, and I'm also on Twitter as Hulkintosh. And I love it when Ryan finds free stuff to give me so I can sell it. <laughs> really? You're an entrepreneur. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, it kind of the, the reason why um, uh, the, we've got this group of people and we've got uh, this little thing here is I thought that it would be well, um, I, a, I thought it would be a good idea to try to do a recap of um, of our experience there at Vintage Computer Festival Midwest, um, which I'm going to shorten to VCF for the rest of this thing. Uh, otherwise, this becomes a 19 and a half hour. Uh, stream just based on uh, trying to be proper, I guess, about the event name. <laughs> but uh, th th this was my second year at VCF, and I had an amazing time. And uh, there's a lot of these people that I've kind of admired from afar for a long time, and hadn't really met in person. So all oh, shucks. Uh, but it, it was it was really cool to kind of get everybody together. And so while the experience of the event it was still fresh in everybody's minds, I thought it would be fun to get together and just kind of talk about uh, maybe cool things that you saw there, uh, neat things that you picked up, uh, things you might want to see next year, and um, advice that you might give to people uh, that are thinking about coming to the event but just haven't pulled the trigger yet on it. So. How about we go through and uh, just do, and, and actually there's a few people that kind of send their regards this evening. Uh, Chris, uh, RetroTech Chris uh, wasn't able to be here this evening. Um, I, I think something uh, came up for, for our good friend, Eric Helgeson, but uh, we will check in with those guys and we'll probably add some things later. But I know that Chris did send a, a regards video, so we'll play that at, at one point uh, during the evening as well. So um, how about we start uh, kind of in uh, reverse order again, maybe start with Adam. Um, what are some of the cool exhibits that you saw? 
Oh, I saw all kinds of cool stuff. Like you'd think that you would just see, you know, some old TRS 80s and Ataris and, and Commodores and, and whatever, but people have all kinds of uh, neat stuff there that it's kind of unexpected. Like there was one guy had a whole bunch of old phones with a whole PBX running and he had it so you could call an answering machine and fax stuff. And then there was people that had like old, you know, like fax terminals and, and mainframe stuff and all this interesting things that a lot of stuff was really older than what uh, I think most of us do. Like our, our stuff's all 80s or maybe in dipping into the 70s, but this is, they had stuff like from the 60s. Um, and then just weird one-off things like an Apple One or um, just, you know, crazy stuff that you never would think you'd ever see in person. And it, it was just a nice variety of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with Adam because there was just a wide variety, right? So if you liked old hardware, like old IBM hardware, there was huge servers there. There was terminal mm-hmm. interfaces. There was um, Commodore, Atari. There was, you know, IBM clones of, of just PC towers, OEM units. There was... I was I was always um, jealous of VCF East because there was a person there that brought the weather station or the weather channel set up right, and they finally came. Or I don't know if it was the same guy or not, but that that setup was here, and it was amazing to see that at per, in person. They were even broadcasting over digital or excuse me analog over channel 13. So if you had an analog television, you can actually pick up a channel that they were broadcasting right at the show. It's stuff like that that really makes it. And this is I've been going to this show since it's local to me for at least the past seven years. And we were in the previous um, hotel and it was very small. It was barely two conference rooms, right? And it's ballooned into this huge show where you you couldn't even there was you would have to park two two blocks down the street. So there was so many things to see here, and I hope more people come to uh, next year because there's, like I said, if you like anything old and vintage, it's most likely at the show. Very cool. Uh, uh, we'll go Steve. Oh my! Um, so this was the second time I've been to VCF Midwest. Uh, <laughs> The first event I went to was VCF East, which is a smaller venue with a different vibe, but it's it's just as awesome. But VCF Midwest, the, the size of it, especially last year when it was my first time going, just blew me away. There are three huge ballrooms. There's a huge hallway. Then there's like an L shape to that hallway that expands out. And this year I stayed on premises because the hotel room sold out last year. But just the amount of different things to see. I mean, there were a lot of sales going on, but then there were also booths and exhibits set up for people that were showing off something. Uh, there was even a, like a 8-bit music chiptune style booth that the guy was buying music during. There was a, like a vintage video camera set up. They were walking around filming stuff. Uh, you had your YouTubers, you know, LGR and Computer Clan and 8-Bit Guy and Ben Heck and all these people. But what, what I found really fascinating was the different like types of setups. There was a whole OS2 booth. There was a whole Atari booth with this beautiful like shelving display, I guess, for stores. Uh, you know, the behind the screens of uh, people were there with the Weather Channel equipment. And, uh, you know, every retro computer machine you could like want to buy was pretty much there if you looked hard enough. And of course, the free pile where you know, we're all very, very bad influences <laughs> on each other. You gotta keep an eye on that free pile. Yeah, yeah. Well, Charles, you, you need this cable, and Adam, you need this box, and Ron, you need this 50 tons of mice pads, you know, mouse pads, you know, so. <laughs> there were mice pads? It's pronounced, yeah. it's pronounced yeah. mice pads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone take a whole stack of them. But anyway, it was just blown me away. Again, this is my second year, but still... Um, the amount of things that were going on, the amount of people that were there that came up and said hello. Um, I think it was just a, a great time, and uh, I can't wait to do it again next year. I already missed it. Eric. Yeah, I was I was actually totally blown away uh, by the people there, honestly. And, and one of the things that was really amazing when, when there were a, a few kids came up, and Steve was actually talking to one of these kids about, like, a computer they've gotten and everything, and he was giving advice and stuff. And it was super awesome to see people coming up and just, like, having questions about stuff. We were answering questions. It was so fun. We got, thank you, Ron, for letting us camp out your table. We were, we were sitting there camping out and, like, selling blue skezzies and telling people about what they could do. And it was, it was awesome. And actually, one thing that really blew me away was the amount of SGI systems there, a lot of SGI systems, beautiful, mm-hmm. like running really nice SGI systems. I don't think I've ever seen that many here. Uh, I've been to VCF West out here on the West Coast many times, or a couple times now, 
And obviously, it's not as big as VCF Midwest, um, but they do have quite a few uh, SGI stuff there, too, but nothing like that at VCF Midwest. Um, but yeah, the other thing, too, is, of course, the free table was fun, just very fun. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, one of the things that stuck out to me is that uh, back when I was in college, um, I wanted to strip a panel from a CDC computer that had core memory. And I just really nerd, you know, geeked out about it. And I thought, oh, little tiny ferrite rings. Well, there was a display there of core memory and explanation of how it worked. And so that was kind of neat for me because I haven't seen it in 40 years. You know, um, so aside from the old tech um, and, and seeing all the systems and everything, uh, what really impressed me was even on Friday night when everybody was just setting up tables, there was so much uh, friendship and camaraderie and people meeting people for the first time, meeting old friends that they'd seen, you know, at previous shows. And I just got this really sent a uh, great sense of um, community, you know, and that's one of the things that we try to foster here. And uh, if all I had done was, you know, follow, uh, you know, Steve around while he met people, and you know got introduced to some of the people friday night and this saturday and sunday i would have been sad but it would have been fulfilling just to do that uh alan i uh as a first time attendee really really loved it um, i'm really glad that ron uh suggested that i do it and encouraged me to go um i'm actually if i can share my screen here i've got some pictures ready of some things that i found really great so i can everybody see this yes oh yeah so, yeah. Yep. yeah so the punch tape machine which uh, was explained yes. to me as being from the 50s from a u.s navy sub so that is uh that was really something easily the uh I don't, maybe not the oldest thing i saw there if i happened to see something older but it was certainly really neat and something that i had not expected to see um, you know, as somebody earlier was saying, we kind of usually dabble in the 80s to 90s stuff, but uh, there was older stuff there than that, which I thought was really cool. The terminals were really neat. Um, I remember playing uh, Snake on this one, so that was, uh, that was a lot of fun for me, uh, even though, you know, I played Snake 100 times. And then seeing the other terminals there i mean since when have has any has most of us been able to lay eyes on something like this in person and that was kind of the thing for me was just being able to see a lot of the stuff in person that up until that point i had only ever been able to see in photos sgi is something uh that's been intriguing to me for some time and to get to see some of those systems some of them even running in person was really amazing um also to see some of these setups like this like these game consoles that were actually set up with you know, kind of period correct televisions and uh, things like that was uh, really cool. The pet was really cool to see. I'll tell you what, I got the biggest kick out of those phones. Uh, phones like this were really not around when I was growing up. And so to get to actually play with these and have them be working right there for me to just enjoy uh, was one of the best things. Hey, and, Alan, uh, hold on one second. I was just going to say that uh, nowadays they're, they're, they're push button. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was vintage. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Sony. Wow. I know, right? And somebody yes. earlier, I forget, I think it was, uh, was Eric, maybe, uh, who was talking about the um, the Weather Channel uh, uh, machines being there, which that was one of the most fascinating things to me, really, was just that those are still actually working. To kind of, I never would have thought, you know, that they had their own deal there. Uh, the Macintosh TV was, of course, really neat. I have a personal fascination with emergency alert systems, so to get to see this was really was really cool for me. But uh, so, were those the is... same guys from East or no? Yes, yeah, okay. and they, yeah. they did a lot of work to reverse engineer a lot of that stuff unofficially to you know get all that working, which is a testament to the dedication to save some of that stuff because I'm pretty sure the the people who owned that equipment back in the day did not want to see it survive. So it's really cool to see it up and running. Yeah. yeah. But as somebody going for the first time, and I actually have a friend of mine who really doesn't do anything with vintage computers at all, but he lives right there in Chicago and he just dropped by and he really loved it too, even. And I think, and I think he may even be getting into it soon. So, I mean, that's kind of the point of this whole thing is I think a lot of people 
uh, came by who don't really do any of this as a hobby for themselves or maybe don't have the means to, but they can still come and experience all this and perhaps be inspired to get into it themselves. And I think that's a really great thing. And also, you know, Ron and Steve's talk about uh, about getting into vintage mat collecting. Uh, in mystery shopping, we have a term we use called actionable intelligence. And I think that that is definitely what you guys provided because uh, <laughs> you actually gave real guidance to somebody who, who might want to get into that who may not know how. So I, I absolutely want to come back next year. It was an amazing experience. Absolutely, absolutely recommend it to anyone. Very cool. Rick? Yes. Uh, second year for me. Uh, last year was kind of like a realizing so my children are getting to the pay point now where i can actually go to these things without just burdening the rest of my family so last year it was the first time i went and just just blown away because i have been into vintage computing for a long time and just to see so many enthusiasts so many people passionate about this and the community everyone wanted to share and seeing such a variety of cool exhibits and meeting a lot of cool people meeting a lot of you for the first time last year and then of course meeting your first time uh this year as well but just, I love the variety and the, the community there. Uh, I did really, really enjoy. I chatted for quite a while with the weather station guys and also the uh, channel preview. So I grew up in Scandinavia. We didn't have the channel preview system at all. So I didn't learn about that until I moved here. And seeing that and discussing with the guy how they like, yeah, they custom built like this board in the back of it. They have a, a modern machine running the video and they're merging all together. And it's like the dedication it takes to get to that point. Is so cool to see, and the fact that people are willing to take the effort to rescue something like that that really has no use. I mean, let's be fair, most of what we do has virtually no use except that it's neat. It's really neat, but it's still it's just preservation. Neat. <laughs> I know, pre yeah, sure, preservation. Don't look behind me. Don't look behind me. I'm preserving. I am preserving all these things. Don't look. Uh, but just the fact that there's such a passionate community around everything. Like, I talked to the OS2 guy for quite a while, you know, and he really likes OS2. And I love seeing that stuff because, you know, I know I can get going on and stuff that I find exciting. But it's the fact there's so many people willing to spend their time, effort and energy to preserve these things for whatever reason. Uh, <laughs> it's just cool to to let everyone see it, you know, um, and I can't wait to go back next year. Now, you usually will find my legs sticking out of whatever pile of random retro cards. The uh, free geek table was there uh, and uh, I was digging through that and I grabbed quite a few sound cards, stuff like that. But. I didn't think I was I was hovering the free table, but by golly, that was like nerd bait. You heard like a box go thud, whoosh, and it was like this this surge of air as everyone rushed to the free table. That was hilarious to see. Loved it. I can't wait for next year. Mm -hmm. Was anybody at the auction? I think the OS2 guy, his name was Josh, really nice guy. And so last year, uh, he, he again, really big into OS2. He was wearing a leather jacket to the auction that says OS2 on it, right? So this this hat i think it was a box copy of os2 warp and an os2 warp hat and went up for auction i don't know if you guys remember this or not so so it starts going up for bid and it starts going up for like 50 bucks and everybody's like what the heck and this guy keeps bidding against josh and and one guy reached out he's like dude this guy's got an os2 leather jacket you might might be smart to bow out now <laughs> <laughs> and he did yeah <laughs> Tom. Yes. So I enjoyed, uh, yeah, seeing the people that either that I've met before at VCF shows or people I know, yeah, through the cyberspace, internet, superhighway thing, and even just, yeah, new people I've never, yeah, never met before, never talked to before. Um, yeah, the telephone booth was really cool with the analog, you know, the old school analog PBX. The, um, the SGI booth was really cool. The Weather Weather Star booth was cool. And yeah, they do um, VCF East at least the past couple of years. They have a, um, I think they posted a couple of things in Hackaday about just like reverse engineering the whole, yeah, the whole Weather Star uh, system and putting on like a Raspberry Pi. So if you're interested in that, yeah, I'm sure if you just search, yeah, Weather Star, Hackaday, the articles will come up. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to going back next year. Already, yeah, already counting down the days, 360 days. <laughs> that was pretty cool, Tom. That like yeah. every day, you'd be like it's one more day. It's yeah, one, one more, more day. day. One more day. It's stressing me out, Tom. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so six more had, hours. <laughs> yes, we had we had a Discord uh, chat going between all of us, and um, yeah, I kept being like, yeah, fourteen days, thirteen days. Oh, we're in the single digits. Nine days. Yeah, twelve days, hours. Days. And then uh, I get there, and retrospect Chris comes up, and he's like, "You got to stop counting down." 
because it's going to be over sooner than we know. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, it was, you know, went right by and it was, yeah, two o'clock on Sunday. Yeah. It happens. Has it I only been, been five days? Feels about like five months. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been driving for. <laughs> Most of those days, Tom I, is I, still I, driving. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've made a few uh, made a few stops in the way. So, Jeremy, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, this was my first year going to uh, VCF. The first kind of vintage thing that I went to was a couple months ago, where Ron was there was Kansas Fest, and I went there by myself, and that was the first time kind of being with the community in person. Um, which is just cool for me because um, I feel whenever I started the hobby, I didn't know anybody and didn't know that it was a hobby or that there was other people who did it. Uh, and so just that there is such a community around it was really cool. Um, but VCF uh, Midwest was awesome because my wife came and she was just excited to see everybody. And so she's like, you know, hey, look, those are all the people that are in your living on our living room all the time. <laughs> there's Ron and there's Steve and there's Clint and there's uh adrian and you know all those people so it was kind of cool to to see everybody in person um i i have a background in video production and so i really love the vintage video um set up the, the guy who had all the cameras um i think i professionally have used about half of the cameras that they had there i was like <laughs> that was the one in college that was my first job that was my second job Mm -hmm. um so yeah i just i really like that i thought that was really cool um i mean I, I right here have a like a vintage like a rack full of vintage uh decks like uh i have a sbhs and a dv cam and and stuff like that so like i'm really into that sort of stuff so i thought that was really cool um obviously the sgi stuff is awesome uh i always wanted to get them uh, when I first started collecting computers because they were the ones that looked cool uh, and also because I have a background in motion graphics design I you know like I was playing with Maya on one of the SGI machines uh, and I was just like oh yeah it's you know like it just was just really cool to be using you know the actual machines that they use for something like Jurassic Park so um, yeah I thought that stuff was really awesome and then um Obviously, it was fun to um, get some uh, pretty high-end YouTubers drunk, so that was cool. <laughs> you make a very good gin and tonic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, these were they, great drinks. Great drinks there on <laughs> Saturday night. Yeah. Um, I wanted to take a second and just talk about because um, again, uh, there's cool exhibits. There's all kinds of cool technology. Cannot uh, understate the the social kind of the the element of all of this and i wanted to show some pictures of some people that i met while i was there um i teased one a second ago but it was really cool i finally got to meet ken from the computer clan <laughs> uh, what a nice guy he had uh some pop sockets for the back of my uh my cell phone i don't even know what that is but i took it anyway uh really cool guy um he was showing off uh some other things that he's got there uh I also got to meet Clint from uh, uh, from LGR. Uh, what an amazing guy. He had all kinds of great, cool stories about uh, when he went to your reset. Uh, just, just a wealth of knowledge, that guy. Um, I also got to meet some friends uh, that some of you guys were, were recognize uh, from uh, uh, Kansas Fest. So they were there. That was kind of cool to see those guys. Um, Got to uh, see uh, another member of the Blue Scuzzy team, um, uh, so we're we're fast friends now. Um, everybody yeah. knows Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement. Uh, here's somebody that uh, I recognize because uh, I've learned more about Hypercard than I ever wanted to know from him. <laughs> There's Garth, uh, just Garthing it up. Uh, there's Eric, and then we can finally get to the bottom of uh, what, who was uh, putting the fingers on Adam, and I guess it was Eric. He finally, he finally came clean. <laughs> but here's Jeremy and Megan, and they were uh, so kind. They were, they were, they ran around and made sure that everybody felt like they were at home. Uh, made some really cool drinks on Saturday. 
Uh, this is my friend Mike Sanders. He drove from Virginia to be there. And I probably saw him for all of 30 minutes the entire weekend because he was just running and nerding out and having an amazing time. Uh, everybody knows Retro Tech Chris. Uh, again, Chris wasn't able to be here this evening, but he did send a, um, a regards video that we'll watch towards the end of the show. Um, this is my friend, Ron Bader. Um, I met him in college and we've just been computer buddies ever since. Uh, this, is, this is some guy. Uh, somebody's falling down the stairs. I, somebody check on Ryan. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think I caught Tom at a weird moment when he was <laughs> elated, elated about something. I was uh, elated about being with you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, here's me and Alan at Portillo's, where I guess many people ate every meal all all the, all weekend. <laughs> I did not. Uh, oh, I don't like that place at all. Yeah. <laughs> here, here's here's Steve and I. We did a uh, we did a panel, and eventually it'll be on the official VCF uh, uh, site. But then it'll also uh, we're, we we've got something else coming up too. I, I look like a hobbit there. <laughs> it's okay. It more more dwarfy. No no comment. And my <laughs> cat. <laughs> but uh, here's my sweaty shirt and Eric Helgeson from the Blue Scuzzy team. And here's uh, Taylor and Amy from uh, Taylor and Amy. Uh, I, those guys were everywhere this weekend, and they were forcing people to sing. So there's a video on their channel uh, of, of us singing uh, Africa, Africa by Toto. Yeah. That was awesome. And I was like, I said, we should sing a song I can actually harmonize to. But they were like, no. So. <laughs> and then we're back to the beginning. Well, their Africa thing worked because I happened to be behind it as it was going on. And I had the, then I had the course of Africa stuck in my head all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to take a lot for that to leave you. Anyway, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, just, just leave. Just, you're, you're yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, we've talked about uh, some cool things that we saw. What are some cool things that you picked up? I know uh, we will... Uh, Steve's <laughs> segment here is going to be 19 and a half hours long. <laughs> um, but, uh, Jeremy... What are some neat things that you picked up at the show? Um, yeah, so I actually didn't think I was going to get anything. I actually brought, I think I brought 10 systems with me to give away, and they were all gone from the free pile in about 30 seconds after I set them down, and that yeah. was Friday yeah. when no one was officially there. One of the towers that I that I gave away was this clear acrylic one, and the guy who had the Japanese systems on display, I guess, wanted it. So he just put it out next to his Japanese systems, and it was there all weekend. Like, this computer that he put on the free pile, he just had sitting next to all his MSX machines. And I was just like, that's, you know, not... It's not on theme for the booth, but... Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I ended up buying two machines. I got an Apple IIc Plus and an Apple II uh, GS ROM 3. Um, from uh, Eric and he had about six other machines that I I was like how much for this and then he gave me a price and I was like let me think about it and then I walked away for about 15 minutes and when I got back it was sold so um, now I know to be quicker <laughs> next time but, but yeah I just got those two machines and then oh and then I got a zip drive uh, that was being clearanced uh, on the last day when they were just like take all the get you know those things. Price. Yeah, make us not carry this home. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. So I've got a mini slideshow. Um it's so pretty got... it's pretty darn mini. You should you should share <laughs> your share Whoa. share that window and then make it a mini it map. Big. Cool. I release one of those mini systems. What you do is you click share at the bottom, and then there'll be an option that says like share window, and then share. you and then you can pick that application, and it'll, and then I'll see it, and then I can add it. <laughs> oh, slow down, there, tech guy! I don't know what you're talking about. Tom, Tom are you in <laughs> Europe? Are you in Europe? Do you need an adapter? All right. I, need a, need I adapter. am an adapter. I am an adapter. All right, so I picked up this um, Power Max 7200 from Ron from his from his horde. Oh no! Stat. Flashing question mark. What will you do? I know. If only there was a good uh, SCSI adapter for it. I got a uh, power computing clone from him. A 
So this was cool. This one cable, I guess they went to the Sears auction that was before it, or the Sears liquidation. They had like 300 IBM Model M's for sale. So I picked up a IBM Model M after, you know, of course I realized, oh, it's missing the F3 key after I bought it, but it was 30 bucks. So I can't complain about that. Got a image writer from Ron, a laser 128 parts machine. It was like, it was either five bucks or 25 bucks. I forgot what I paid for it, but it was cheap enough that it was, um, yeah, worth it. I got, got a couple of duo docs from Ron. I got a Commodore pet that I bought from uh, Thomas Andrews of Amiga of Rochester. Mm-hmm. So that's the pet 2001, but it has the uh, the later keyboard rather than the cast register style keyboard. So that's, that's good. I picked up a Commodore 16 from I forgot his name, but he was in our he's in our Discord. So I traded a couple of blue scuzzies uh, for it. I got a tower of Mac LCs or LC style machine. So two LCs and then a uh, Performer 410. So the second LC I got from Eric Helgeson, um, and I have plans to. It's just basically the logic board in case, but I have plans to make a rack mounted Mac LC so I can uh, get that in my server rack which is a normal thing for a server rack. I picked, this is a lovely machine. A, uh, a HP Pavilion, it was at the auction. I think I was the third bidder. bidder. I won it for 15 bucks. You paid too much. I, it, has, <laughs> you know, it has the restore CD with it. Oh, you wow. never see the restore CDs. It's got that and it, it has, yeah, it has the door. Those are usually broken off. And it has the, uh, it has two modems for some yeah. reason. Box, yeah, box of stuff from Ron. So there's a uh, new bus sound card, copy of Apple Works, some of the the best keyboards, the Apple Design keyboards. <laughs> now, now I hear that everybody should throw out their um, extended keyboard twos and just switch <laughs> to the Apple Design keyboard. Is that true? I love the Apple Design keyboard. It's the best keyboard Apple's ever made. You'll never lose the cord. <laughs> yeah. So this is one of those like PC on a board things. LGR did a video about it. Um, a while ago and I guess you get like a back plane for it and have a bunch of yeah, you know, a bunch of carded yeah, you know, essentially PCs. There's a processor on there and memory and all that fun stuff. So Ron convinced me to get it because it's gonna look cool on the shelf. <laughs> a uh, Power Mac G three accessory kit. This is a uh, PowerBook five twenty power adapter which Ron was kind enough to give me for my five twenty that's missing the power adapter. But it's important to point out that's a Tom Barber limited edition. Oh yeah, power yeah, it's, it's worth. Power <laughs> it's it's worth you know dollars, yeah. several of them. <laughs> but then you add my signature and you know it subtracts the value by fifty percent. Write any number on this piece of paper right now. <laughs> a uh, Quantum Book Bigfoot hard drive from Steve. Ooh, nice. Ooh. A mouse in the box from Ron, and then Steve gave it to me. I just bought one of those. <laughs> Can I just like do DVD and USB? Can I do interrupt for just one quick second? You cut because... a hole in the box, you put the mouse in the box, and you <laughs> give her the box. It's a mouse in the box. This may be the highest concentration of geekery going on because there was a collective ooh at that Bigfoot drive. I just have to point yes. that out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I have no idea if it works or not, but... Um, That's irrelevant. Ooh, they're, they're cool. <laughs> it, it'll, it'll look cool on the shelf next to the, uh, yeah, the PC card thing. <laughs> a uh, duo 230 from ron i for, i powered it on um yesterday i forgot how bad the uh the black and white screens are in the duos it's all like ghosty really? and everything yeah but luckily Ghost. i got a dock so i can use it with that just gotta recap it yep so this was a this wasn't vcf but i picked it up from steve this was a uh <laughs> mac 128 that he picked up for me um a couple of months ago that he was hiding, he was holding hostage in his basement, and he finally <laughs> released it in exchange for the Lisa, <laughs> in exchange for Steve's stuff. He gave me the 128, <laughs> or released the 128 as hostage. <laughs> a uh, M1212 monitor from Rick, who got it from his friend. I, I just want to point out that we didn't know that monitor was there until we dug out everything. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we were, we were digging stuff out, and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> I I bought one of these LC monitors, the 12-inch ones, 
And then there was one in Ron's pile, so now I have two of them. Uh-oh. Could never have too many. And then a uh, MIDI switch interface um, from Ron, and a MIDI cable, a parts SE, already in by parts, I mean, pretty much just the CRT, which is all I needed. And then uh, from Joe, I, for I forgot about this until I arrived at Joe's house, and he's like, I have something for you. It's a uh, TRS-80 Model 4 uh, project that I in expressed interest in a while ago. Totally forgot about it till the van was totally full. I get there, and he's like, I have something for you. And I was like, oh, no. Luckily, it fit there. <laughs> a uh, classic two um, parts machine. CRT was kind of messed up, but we'll see what else is. Yeah, what, what the rest of it is. And then this was from Alan, a... Um, blue and white yeah. uh, G3 monitor. And then this was the van uh, when my stuff was in it. And this is the van when Steve's stuff was in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, quarters. The rest, yeah. So, and then half the stuff is in my you know, parents' kitchen. <laughs> so that, those are my, uh, my pickups. Oh, yeah. And then a uh, Mystic logic board, which I didn't get a picture of, but it's... Um, it's been recapped and everything, so going to be good for my color classic. That's quite a haul. Yep, yeah. just just a couple of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rick, what'd you get? I'll say Tom won. I think we can just pack it in anyway. <laughs> uh, I, guess. No, I, think, I think Steve's going to be the Steve or maybe Adam. I don't, yeah. know, I'm not sure. uh, I don't yeah. know. Steve and Adam, I think, I don't know. here. So yeah, for the record, last year um, when I, I flew uh, for the first time then, and this time I drove, which made it riskier and also easier uh, in the sense that I could haul more stuff with me. But I actually had a net loss. I brought more stuff with me since I transported some of these old monitors. Um, but I, I love the fact that there's such a variety. Like you can find really old stuff, but you can also find, you know, quote unquote, fairly modern stuff. Um, one of the things I did pick up, which right now is just a faceplate because it's disassembled into pieces. It's just this generic looking 46 from the same guy that was selling the Model N keyboards. And he wanted like not that much money for it. It doesn't work. I think the power supply shot, but these are the kind of things you can pick up for next to nothing at this event. And the fact that you can get that kind of stuff, if you want projects like Tom showed, it's very easy to fill a van or a car or your suitcase, whatever it might be. Um, so I look forward to messing with that machine because uh, I kind of want to you know, make it kind of the ultimate 46 if I can. I don't think it can be, but it's fun anyway. But to show the variety, I collect big boxes, as you can see behind me. I grabbed several of them that I've been looking for that are just sitting on a table right there for, you know, 10, 15 bucks. And uh, many of these things that I think that we find a frustration in the retro collecting or retro hobby, everything is going up in price. Everything's going up. And it's not really worth that a lot of the time. You know, these random beige machines, there was one table selling unclean, untested machines for like $200. And at the end of the night, they were still not sold because that's too much. And the people are selling them out for 20 to 40. They were just flying off the table, you know, and it's, it's nice to see they go back into the community where they can get used. So grab that tower. Um, I picked up a few big boss games I've been looking for that I was so surprised to see in, in person. But it's one of those things you walk by a table like, hey, hey, there's that thing for like $15. You grab it before anyone else does, you know. <laughs> um, and then I picked up something that's completely random. But a, at the very end, when that last table was basically fire selling everything to not have to haul it home, a uh, Dell 2007 FB, I think, monitor. And it's an interesting monitor because it is a 5x4 monitor. That's 1600 by 1200 making it very good for DOS resolutions. But it also has composite and S-Video in. So you can you can run a Commodore 64 on it, an Amiga. It supports all the uh, 15 kilohertz signals. So it's a very good utility monitor. 10 bucks. Like, mm. that on eBay runs a lot more. It's not worth that much, I think. But this is a very desirable monitor from a utility perspective. But it shows you like the variety of things you can find. Like, okay, 486, a you know monitor I can use for my random projects, and it's that kind of stuff you can get. And I grabbed some few sound cards for specific projects, things like that. But I didn't go overboard this year uh, on purpose, almost because there was a lot more I could have gotten. But I, I kind of got the cash out. I'm like, this is my limit, and it, it didn't help the fact the ATM at the hotel ran out of the cash too, which prevented me from going beyond my limit so you know uh, just a few just a few pickups i restrained myself i tried to get the ambiance and the enjoyment of the event more than the because you know who cares about material things they don't really matter right 
<laughs> right. Mac, what did you get? No, Mac. <laughs> Uh, so I, I don't have uh, like photos in order, so I'm just going to pick a few things. Um, but there were a lot of cool things just everywhere. So I was just like drooling at everything. Um, this I thought was really cool. This was a power computing monitor. And mm-hmm. it was actually not like a crummy one because usually <laughs> you, you think it was like a rebranded like POS. No, this had BNC connections and a a VGA port in there. And I bought enough stuff from this gentleman where he's like, I don't want to take this home either. Take it. So uh, I'll be doing a, a detail of like all the crap that I found its way home with me on my mm-hmm. channel eventually. But uh, here's Mark of MacFX safely stowing his Lisa <laughs> base plate, which is apparently worth uh, quite a hefty sum. So after the show, he was taking that in the mouse off the table so they didn't walk away. Yeah. Um, it's just a shot of... Uh, you know, before we were setting up uh, some cool things I did pick up. There's this guy, Ron. I don't know. Where, he just kept following us around. Yeah. Um, I did not buy that Performa. That was a big no, no. Um, this he didn't a, buy me either. <laughs> this is a shot of the free pile. Yeah, it just kept like morphing. And look at this <laughs> huge honking <laughs> server. Somebody almost tripped over that. It's it huge. Uh, that's nothing. I, I don't know what, why they keep these computers in you know the hotel rooms it's just you know you can't even get on <laughs> look at that mouse pad <laughs> yeah I, I mean they're yeah. trying to tell me to sign online i don't know what to do you're not getting in line with that attitude i'm just saying <laughs> um this guy had a really cool mac but he didn't sell it i'm trying to find a picture of here it is uh these mice these are little uh mice with uh covers on them so these are actually mm-hmm. apple puck mice with these weird covers to make it a little easier to hold. I've never seen these before. They were $5 each, so I said sold. I bought the pair. And then this is a G3, uh, sorry, G4 accelerator cord uh, for a, uh, I think it's a G4 cube, I believe. Um, so that was pretty cheap, so I picked that up in the hopes of getting that to work on a system. And this is something I bought ages ago and always regretted not buying another one because they shot up in price. This is a USB Firewire uh, IDE and uh, SATA enclosure rather uh, for Macs and PCs. But what's great about it is it's bus powered. And so you just slap a hard drive in there and you have a great bootable FireWire device. Uh, I almost bought one of these keyboards, but I, I had the colors and didn't have How enough much room. Was he asking for those? Do you remember? <laughs> What'd you say? How much was he asking for those? Do you remember? No, but they weren't that expensive. I remember I got okay. one last year for $5. I just have to give a shout out to this guy. Who was just standing by a cart with a <laughs> selling sign on him? I just yeah. thought that was amazing. Yeah. Me and Eric bought a whole bunch of stuff from that guy. Remember, Good. he didn't even get it in the building. Remember that? He was yeah. he oh, his yeah. car. We accosted him at the back door. So. Yeah, we, we, we tackled him before I, he even got in yeah, the building. Yeah, thanks to Adam for saying, Eric, come quick, <laughs> run. <laughs> here's, here's, got the words. here's a Matt what? showing me a big Super Matt banner. Uh, super Mac banner. I almost said super. Well, I said super Matt, but anyway, he is I super. Mac. Uh, but uh, yeah, turn your head. It, this is uh, you know the company that uh, morphed into the, one of the Mac clone companies. Uh, mm-hmm. So I bought that banner because I thought it was really cool. Here's Adam looking crazy because has too much Apple's two stuff in his hands. Uh, <laughs> I almost picked up that VCR from the table. And there's one more thing I wanted to show. This guy made this giant keyboard, which was <laughs> awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Where's the other thing I bought? One second. One second. One second. Sorry. I did not organize. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> this guy really? bought cool stuff. Uh, where'd it go? One of your first pictures had um, your big purchase. Yes. Well, this was my big purchase. This was uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> some yeah. thing yeah. that Adam looked at and was like, oh, I want that. So I'm like, okay, here, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. How else would you charge your phone? Exactly. And it says touch me on it. And that's exactly what he's doing. So, uh, yeah. Oh, here it is. This is my big purchase. A next 400 DPI laser printer. Yay. Yay. Another printer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go on. In the oh. box. <laughs> now I'll be, I'll be going through all the rest of my purchases and junk on, on my channel. I have to make a list, but, uh, yeah. So Lisa was acquired and a next bundle with way too many wires was acquired. So, uh, I look forward to tinkering around with those things and figure out what the heck I'm going to because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why next? Right. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, um, you're, I, you're next to Steve. Are you next to Steve on your I screen? I think I am next to okay, Steve. Okay, great. Okay, cool. 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 Anyway, um, I don't have a lot of pictures. Um, I actually started inventorying this stuff and, and just trying to organize it. I've got uh, a bin full of mice. i got a bin full of networking stuff. But I did pull out of the giant pile in this room of things. And I have to thank Adam for helping me get this. Oh, nice. So it does have some issues. Uh, he cautioned me not to plug it in and turn it on until I look at the power supply. Um, yeah, we yeah, don't don't need that. So I haven't done that yet. A uh, couple of drives to go with it. I also picked up a Mavica. Uh, some of you know I'm a photographer too. And I thought, well, what fun. Why not do... Uh, some pictures on a floppy, you know. Yeah. Uh, I also picked up these for like two bucks each. They both work. Um, oh, cool. You know, the Sony Watchmans. Um, mostly so I could hack them and make, you know, like retro handheld gaming machines or something. Cool. Um, you know, slap a pie on it. Uh, what else? A Style Writer 2 printer, an Image Writer 2 printer, because I want to be Steve and I don't have any printers. Um, also, a, a portable printer. Um, the big thing was uh, Matt, the same guy that Steve bought the, um, you know, the uh, Next Cube from, had three boxes of assorted Texas Instruments uh, TI-994-8 computers. And I had been looking for maybe a cart or two cartridge for mine. It was the first computer I ever had and uh, never could afford to expand it. And he's like, well, you know, I've got some stuff here. I haven't gone through it yet. Uh, you know, 75 bucks or whatever it was. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll come back by after you have, because he was too busy trying to get set up. I'll come back by and take a look. Well, he came running over to Ron's table and pulled me aside. He says, you really need to come look at this. I opened up the boxes and I'll still sell it to you for the same price. So I went and looked. Mm -hmm. He had, there's easily 30 cartridges. Um, there was the speech mod synthesizer module that goes with the TI. There was uh, box games and manuals, tapes. Uh, it. Just the speech synthesizer alone is is probably worth seventy five bucks. There was a Tippy interface which does uh, get you on the internet and uh, simulates a drive. Um, there there was some uh, the uh, the ultimate Grom, which is a cartridge that lets you put multiple cartridges on it. I don't know. It's just seventy five bucks. You you know you. I, I could have easily, if I tried to acquire that over time, spent, you know, 10 times that much trying to get all that. So that's about it. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff. Of course, I, you know, I got some things from Ron, too. Um, I got a tube so I could fix the SE. I broke the tube on. All right, so I got the SE that's got no, no uh, logic board, but it's got the tube and everything. Um, there's a Color Classic 2. That I'm gonna work on. Um, uh, there's a it's upside down. It's a uh, Quadra 610 that's got a nice uh, uncracked, broken uh, case that I can use, and a hundred other things. So, Earth. Cool. Yeah, actually, so like others have said, I, I, I did not drive. I flew in, so I was limited to the amount of stuff I could get, which was a good thing in many ways. So uh, my main thing, I was looking for certain things I needed to get that I couldn't find very easily online or something. And by far was floppy drives, believe it or not. I need PC floppy drives, five and a quarter inch floppy drives. So I got a really a nice couple of these, and uh, I was super happy to find that. Actually, I think I think it was you, Steve, that, that tipped me off to these, a box of these, or maybe Adam. And I got, uh, and I got them like... Yeah, I, I got them like literally the first day of the show. And then secondly, <laughs> Eric finds this in the free pile. This is a <laughs> Japanese uh, ADB keyboard. And I have a Japanese um, Mac that I need to set up at some point with all the software and stuff. So this is actually super cool to have. So I made I made Eric an offer you can refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, here, take it. No, take my money. Take my I know, money. Right. Eric, look, uh, Garth, look, look, I've got the a uh, different revision. See my return key? Nice. 
Do you have the uh, colored logo? I have a color logo. See, I knew you're gonna make fun of me because like this is the this is the bad one. <laughs> this is so, Alps. so just for clarification, um, Garth, yours is the ANSI style uh, return key or whatever. What is that called compared I to have the? No idea. Really All do. right. Well, thanks. Wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Wealth of knowledge, Garth Beagle, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. It clicks. And then I got on recommendation from Retrotechie, a good friend of mine, this rare. Atari combat cartridge. He said it's pretty rare. I paid twenty dollars for it. He said I got a really good deal. So um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, some people have said I didn't. I don't know. Whatever. But I got that too. Twenty I got a super nice, thing. like like brand new USB powered zip drive. And I've been looking for one of these, but every time I see one, they just go for stupid money, and it's just annoying. I just, this is like the one zip drive I don't have. I have all the others, but not this one. Then, then the best thing, and I have to ask, I have to uh, say thank you very much to Mr. McIntosh. The model and keyboard. Listen to that. Oh yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> I've always wanted one of these. Yeah, so super happy about that. There was a crazy thing going on with the um, IBM's or the uh, Sears sale, and yeah, this was pretty incredible to be able to get this. And this one, it's it's pretty much unused except it's missing two keycaps. So now you know, fortunately, I've got a pause key instead of a right arrow key. But what are you gonna do? It works. So yeah, super happy with. Um, what I got. I got a few other things, but those are the main things. And, and really, like I said, I, I, I couldn't take on too many big things. There were so many things I saw there I wanted. There was a, a, a nice Tangerine eye book that, you know, we all saw and it was oddly not for sale, but displayed as if it was for sale. But yeah, that wasn't going to happen. But I was super happy with what I got, though. Yeah, I think that guy's table, he had a bunch of stuff that was like, if you give me the right price, I'll sell it, but it's not really for yeah. sale. So I forgot. That's exactly what it was. I think it was like he wanted like 300 bucks for the iBook or something like that. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, if someone gives me 300 bucks, I'll take it. But, uh. <laughs> yeah. Alan. So I, uh, I also got a great deal of things from Ron, and I have not cataloged them all yet, but, uh, a lot of keyboards, a lot of floppy disks, um, too many CRTs, really. It was uh, <laughs> absolutely filled up my my station wagon as I left, and uh, I didn't even quite get all of it. About uh, some all-in-one uh, Max, which uh, including at least one that I was definitely advised uh, that beginners should not collect in somebody's talk during the during the thing. But uh, <laughs> I, I did it anyway. So, but uh, I haven't gone through all that stuff. But I can show you. Uh, the things that I was actually pretty excited to get from the con from the uh, kind of festival itself, and so and I, I achieved my goal of coming back with less than I took up, but uh, I did have to buy a couple of machines, and so here is uh, I actually bought a couple of Sun machines. So this is an Ultra 10 uh, next to a Power Computing uh, Tower Pro 250 that I got from Ron, um, but so I've got that Ultra 10 and this Ultra 2. And the reason I bought both of those is because I've always been fascinated kind of by uh, Unix in general and by Sun Machines, but I've never actually had one. I'll tell you, I haven't the slightest idea how to use either of these machines. And in fact, uh, the, the, the gentleman that sold me the Ultra 2 uh, walked me through the process of shutting it down. And he actually directed me to the command line in order to do that because he didn't even remember how to do it from the GUI. So that's, uh, that's <laughs> I guess, gave me a little bit of foreshadowing as to what I'm getting into here. But uh, other than that, um, I only I, I picked up a little Chromebook from the free pile, and that was about it. I uh, I, I came away pretty light. Yeah. Uh, Starbuck Tech is asking in chat um, if you have a YouTube channel or not. I know that you had some legal problems for a while because you were trying to use you, the abbreviation of your name as the channel, and as Alan Michael DeYoung, I hear there was some company that was giving you a bunch of static. So what happened was I was trying to buy deyoung.com, the domain, and uh, I guess uh, deyoung means something in Chinese. That's a fairly popular word, and so they wanted like $100,000 for that domain, and uh, I shot them an offer, and they blocked me, so I gave up on that endeavor. But uh, mm -hmm. my YouTube channel is ADY. I don't remember the URL. Um, I will try if to. If they uh, search for ADY, because yeah. it's probably going to give you better results than when they search for AMD, but sure. I mean, narrowed down a little bit. <laughs> I uh, I search ADY. It does not come up, but uh, hang on. I will. I will. I will get it. I can do that very quickly here. You can paste her into the chat. Yeah. 
So, uh, uh, Mr. McIntosh. Sure. First, first, a lot of people here hooked me up with some some really great things. Um, Alan got hooked me up. We did some trades for a G5. I need some parts for. Um, Rick hooked me up with a studio display monitor that was really nice. Jeremy really helped out. Um, I had a bunch of Macs that I was. I, I love Blue Scuzzy, but I wanted to put some original drives back in these particular Macs, and he hooked me up with those and a CRT for my SE30 that needs some help. So I really appreciate that. Um, and some of the finds, let me see if I can share out here and I'll show, share some of the finds. I think Amy joined the chat to command yeah. the singing performance now. I want you, uh, you want to do a live reciting go. of, uh, of <laughs> Africa there. That's still stuck in my head. Thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody once told me. Oh, uh, no, 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 Okay. Ryan, are you trying to share your window there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm a Windows guy. I'm not sure how to use this Mac, so. That's all right. In in the in the StreamYard window, if you just go to share <laughs> and then click share share screen or whatever, and then you pick the app you have open that's got your images and. Oh, see, I, I gotta hold on one second here. So while you're doing that. This is the sticker and button haul. Yes. So that was really successful. As you can see, Amy and Taylor had the largest sticker. Wait, hold on one anyone. second. I was going to solo lay out. There we go. Yeah. Nice. And That's Jeremy's uh, Jeremy's got the biggest uh, coaster. Yeah. The only coaster. Hey, but, since uh, what's what's that picture there? What's that picture there that we oh, teased earlier? Yeah. The photo. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was. Um, they had this funky old camera set up with a, uh, it must be a thermal printer. It's kind of a plasticky mm -hmm. kind of uh, printing material. And you could take your own photograph and it would spit it out and you could tear it off. Yeah. So, so I took two. Yeah. Got one with my AUX t uh, shirt that I made. Thank you, Dana, for the, uh, uh, the, she did the, or they did the, uh, uh, vector art for that from scanning a cd that's cool anyway but yeah that was pretty cool yeah it's but, a um, it's a sonogram that's it yeah sonogram. it's like a sonogram Sonog mm -hmm. right so this is a a sound image of my face i i like to take credit for that because the person who set that up was from vcf east and i yeah. brought my setup with a quick take camera plugged into one of those filters at vcf east so i'm taking full credit for that. Uh -huh. i did not see that there at all i would have totally loved yeah. taking a picture of that and yeah you're right you had that at the other show it was yeah, if it i had was seen right. it i would have said that's a clone of what steve did yeah it, it was right by ben, ben hacks <laughs> it was one table over but well, uh, gonna, uh, Mr. McIntosh, I, didn't, I didn't mean to remove you um, oh no, you... that's that's okay. Um, can you see my there screen now? Yes. Oh hey, yeah. Sorry, I didn't grant uh, oh, screen sharing abilities to Chrome. Sorry. So so I picked up a, a couple of great finds at the show. Uh, Steve, um, who was who came to the show with Matt, um, had this Vulcan Applied Engineering um, power supply uh, controller card, and inside this box right here is a SCSI drive. So you can put drop this into your 2GS and have a 20 megabyte hard drive. Well, this one's 40 megabyte. A hard drive in your 2GS. So I, when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to have that. And he also had a high speed SCSI card on the table too. So I can um, connect um, an external drive, for example. So I also picked that up from him. He looked me up with a really great deal. And we were, as Garth mentioned, uh, of course, I picked up my own uh, Model M keyboard, which is really nice. And this beautiful Acer yeah, Aspire hey, 1 sorry. from 1996. I saw this thing sitting there and I just, I have to get this thing. So it's just so strange and weird. I just had to get it mm -hmm. to brought that home. And of course, the biggest find of all, my PCI parallel card. <laughs> <laughs> oh the real what winner. What the heck is that <laughs> real winner? Thing. What the heck? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like what you need and nothing more. It's a <laughs> saw it's blade. Yes. PCI speed. <laughs> That's funny. Adam, what did you get? What oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's 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 one of those things where it's probably easier to say, Adam, what didn't you buy? 
No, I'm not going to go through everything I bought. And also, I, I came home Sunday. I drove all the way back here. I basically dumped everything in the house. And then I went out of town for another week. And I've only been back again for a few hours. So um, I don't have everything <laughs> here. But I got this got this GS. Everybody saw me with it, with it in the photo. Mm -hmm. um, that has a bad power supply, it turns out. And I got from the guy at the back door that we were talking about, I got this what should be platinum. 2e it actually completely <laughs> works all the cards are good mm -hmm. it'll get retro brighted from mr ron i got this nice laser 128 i did just plug this in and it does boot it does work the keyboard even works so hey. it needs some cleanup but that's a, that's a keeper and then i got a very good deal on this apple 2 plus it all works it just needs some adjustments and some cleaning and then I got the 2CI that I found the first night that was, I think, 40 or 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it came with the, uh, the 100 megahertz RPC card in it. Yeah. And I just learned that it has uh, 32 megs of PAL RAM in it, which can fit in a Mac 2. That's cool. Um, and then I got a whole mess of EEPROMs, which means I can upgrade. Apple II stuff, and I was—I think these are my favorite—is these uh, uh, Apple II joysticks. I got them uh, five bucks a piece, and these just, these sold for a hundred and something bucks on eBay. So that was a really good deal. But yeah, there's way too much stuff that I can't even—I can't even go over all of it. But that's the highlights. You know, going around with Adam, Adam has a particular knack of just like, no, we get we got to look a little deeper. You need to look look a little bit different, and he kept finding stuff. And like the stupid TCI thing, I'm like laughing. I'm like, look at that two CI with the Daystar on it. I'm like, that's not gonna have anything. And I just passed it by. He's like, no, let's look inside. He unburies it, and it did. I was like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And then like later on, he goes back to some stupid Apple Works box. He's like, remember that Apple Works box? I was like, yeah. And I'm like, inside outside it said it said Apple hardware written on it, and inside it there was like some couple hard rare rarish hardware things he found inside. I'm like, seriously? I'm like. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, so follow yeah. Adam around. It's kind of funny what you'll find. <laughs> That's a good point, Garth, because I think someone mentioned that earlier that as the show went on, as things sold, there was more stuff under. So you would end up finding more stuff at tables after the original stuff like boxes on top of boxes would it sell. Yeah. yeah. It's very like, much like computer reset because it's like as those layers got pulled away, there were new treasures underneath. So there were people that came and stayed an hour, and they didn't see a, a tenth of what was on sale. <laughs> the other thing, too, is like that, that guy at the back door with all that pile of stuff that it looked like he just pulled it out of some school warehouse. I mean, he walks up with you know these old floppy drives, and they've just been sitting there stored. They weren't used the whole time by people. So all these things work. It's not like the stuff you find on eBay where somebody messed with it and, and broke it or used it till death. It, these were just got, probably got stored away in like 1989 and they've been sitting there for 30 years. Like this Model M keyboard I have here, I swear. It's like you said, what did you say, Mr. McIntosh? You're saying it's like they sat somewhere and yeah, someone so came let, by let, and taped two commands. Yeah. <laughs> I want to just mention that real quick. So th that's such a unique story because of the fact that basically at the Sears headquarters, they had a multiple server data center rooms and they had these database programs running on like, I think they were like IBM Model 50s and they had these model and keyboards that they connected and obviously everything came in a box and they set it up on these tables and it's almost like they were never used again they were basically someone started the program and then the only time they pulled it put it away was when they replaced the computer and put another computer there and then just stacked all the keyboards in in a pile off to the side of the data center and they were never touched so when he put these things on the table they were Again, everybody's seen what, what keyboards can get like, right? And whether it's used in a company or someone's house, but these things were almost like they came out of the box and they were put back in and that was it. That's what was so special about seeing these things. Yeah, and I, I wanna thank Ryan for uh, pointing them out. Here's a, here's a picture that uh, I was following Ryan with when the guy brought in some more of the IBM stuff. Uh, I just wanna point out that these monitors have such burn-in and you, can, <laughs> and you can read them pretty legibly. Here we here we go. Oh wow! Yeah. I looked at them and it's like token oh, ring cool monitors. And then <laughs> awesome. nope. So look at that though. This it says in the top row, computers last reset by operator, seven twenty two nineteen ninety five. Wow. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Wow. That's funny. Yeah, and then the keyboard that was with it, um, we had I a picked lot of, up, yeah, see, we had a lot of, of uh, uh, punch drunk <laughs> typing on that keyboard at the end of the show. I forgot about that one. Associate discount. Uh, Associate yes. discount. So that, that keyboard right there actually came from a Sears store at a, a point of sale terminal. And there was just buttons for a call manager, return item, employee discount. Look, there's a pack <laughs> button. <laughs> just the most bizarre stuff. Hey, there's got a one of card. Did you get yeah. one, Steve? <laughs> uh, I got the Model M keyboard. I didn't grab one of those weird ones, though. Okay. Could have gotten a discount, but you know, yeah. passed it up. Uh, and I was going to say, one of the coolest things I got, and it's something that actually Steve grabbed, but he was so kind to let me have it because he knew I was looking for it forever. Was a uh, the uh, Ethernet card for the SE30. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And thanks to Ron because Ron was by the big table with us. He saw the box and he grabbed it and gave it to me. And I only saw the name of the company, so I thought it was like the SCSI Ethernet adapter. So I said, "Oh, cool! I don't care if it's just the box. I'll take the box." And then Adam recognized what it was, and I said, "Well, I just want the box." And he, I said, "I don't know if there's anything inside of it." Lo and behold, we opened it up and had documentation and everything. Now that box is now in Thomas' possession. So he's yep, holding it. Was... Hostage. It'll have to make its way down here so I can properly archive everything. But mm -hmm. I'm glad you found your card because I want to see what you're going to do with that crazy SE. And, and that's the thing too is that that's that's what was special about this group too is like almost everybody brought something right. And to them, I was like, I got to get rid of this. I got to get this out of the house. But to everybody else in this room, like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> right? Yeah. I used most of my time just uh, like that, where it was just kind of ran and looked and saw. And I was like, because I'm like, hey, there's a whole box of, um, of five and a quarter and three and a half inch Apple drives. Guy wants five bucks a piece. Uh, do you think Adam wants this? And Steve is like, what do you think? <laughs> and so, so I was like, "All right, find Adam. Where, where's Adam?" Yeah, and and we we helped a lot of people too that were just um, like, there's a young YouTuber, um, it's um, Zeke the Geek, uh, that was like, "Hey, yes. I'm trying to get a, a little Macintosh, and how you know can I get some help?" And and Steve was like making buying recommendations and stuff, and just trying to. That's not how I saw it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah. It's, I, <laughs> Never mind. There were a couple of pictures that were taken of Steve while he's talking to the, the this young man, and it was just it was the most germane kind of conversation ever. But every picture Garth took, he's like he's like Rah! like it's big eye eyebrows. I'm so mad. It must have been when they told me like how yeah, much they were selling. Yeah, yeah, like the fifty four hundred for is like over yeah. two hundred dollars, and I'm like. <laughs> So no. like, <laughs> picture and it's like mac 84 hates children yeah <laughs> so, so so but what ended up being recommended and the deal that was brokered was a 6100 um that, that was like maxed out ram it you know it'll probably need some help in the hard drive department and stuff but it had a g3 upgrade 20 dollars and so i mean it was that's an amazing that's an amazing price on just the g3 upgrade because earlier in the show, I was like, I went by the table and I said, hey, um, how much for this? And it was out of that same box that um, that Steve got a couple of his uh, G3 upgrades. And I was like, how much for this? And they're like, uh, we're kind of wanting to hold it because we're going to sell it with this 6100. And I was like, oh, OK. And, and then it was like, oh, yeah, it's $20. And it includes the 6100. That was the part they left out. But it was still good because it made a way for a young person to kind of get into this hobby and get excited about things. That just yeah. doesn't show you how much the 6100s are worth these days. So. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that, that's, a, that's an interesting situation, too, because Jeremy kind of mentioned this earlier where he was looking at something at a table, was told the price, and, and he thought about it, right? And mm -hmm. throughout the, you're almost taking a gamble, right? Because at, when the show first started, it's pretty much whatever the price is, not too much uh, bargaining. But as the weekend went on, there was definitely a lot of bargaining. No one wanted to take the stuff home, right? But right. you're almost taking a, a gamble because if you leave, that thing could mm -hmm. be gone, right? right. Or you can gamble right. and say, maybe I can get a better deal on it later uh, in the weekend because a lot of stuff started disappearing and there's a lot of deals be, being made that's at why, that time. Mm -hmm. That's why I pulled the trigger on this. Like Retro Techie said, it was right. Yep. It was the right thing to do. Yep. Well, I know that uh, <laughs> Macintosh, you found from the same gentleman I got a box of great stuff last year. 
you got a was it a box of floppy drives? Was that yeah, so let, let's talk about that real quick because last year Steve and I were walking around the show and we went at this table and this nice gentleman was there and he had a box full of literally I don't know how many it was it was all kinds of stuff cables, uh, Ethernet adapters, and a bunch of really nice older mice too, like for an Apple II C <laughs> and, and everything in there in really nice condition. And I remember he's like, well, he went with it. He's like, or I could just sell you the whole box. And like Steve's like, sure. <laughs> it was just like, uh-huh. we go there this year, the same guys there, same table, almost like the same box. But it's almost like instead of, you know, the other stuff, he grabbed a, a box of, of floppy drives. And I was like, oh, how much are you asking? He was asking really affordable prices. And he's like, how about just a whole box for 70 bucks? I'm like, <laughs> sounds like a deal. And then in there was what Adam, you got that? You got that? In yeah, yeah. Adam That's why I had it. This laser, really nice laser three and a quarter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's really unique. And and I gave that to Adam because I know he was after that. But that's just kind of <laughs> some of the stuff like that the, happens. Well, yeah. I wanted it because it goes with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and that was really nice because we kept trying to find the guy because he was gone. And it's like, okay, well, he's not here. And then I walked away and then Ryan walked away and then everybody else walked away. And then it was like, Oh, I found him. I bought the whole box. Here you go. And he, and he just gives Mr. McIntosh gives me the gives me the drive. So I I appreciate that. Thank you. And it's funny too because he because I didn't have I didn't have change. He didn't have any, any change too. So he's like, oh, you know, I'll just put it to the side and we'll do a deal tomorrow. I'm like, mm, I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll make that deal there and, and yeah. get it done. You know. So so yeah, that was a great yeah. deal. Yeah. Well, um, the next thing that I kind of wanted to talk about is kind of twofold, which is. Um, things you maybe want to see next year and advice that you would give to people that are coming to the show, maybe for the first time, maybe they're kind of excited now. They want to, uh, you know, uh, make the, make the trip. Um, what type of advice you would offer. And I would just say the things I want to see next year is I want to see maybe a more organized um, sort of presence with the classic Macintosh people. Because we, we had, I know that's not our bag, baby, but uh, I, I, had a, I had a table this year and we, we made good use of it uh, to be able to sell some things and to be able to uh, kind of use it as a base of operations. It sure makes the day go a little easier if you know where you can go back to find your friends. And so definitely I want to keep on with that next year. Uh, the advice that I would give people is pace yourself. Um, get there early on Saturday. There's going to be some amazing deals that are, uh, you know, available right then and there. People that want to unload things quick because they, they might be leaving that evening or whatever. You're going to get some good deals from those folks, but definitely don't over buy, like don't overspend on things. Cause you, you probably have in your mind what something is going to cost on eBay or whatever. But there's a lot of things there that, again, once the cash changes hands, there's no going back on whatever that transaction is. So uh, make sure that you kind of think or make sure you kind of look at things from a, a point of view that it's like, you know, this could this could be a, a you know, a basket case that I'm going to take home and have to repair. Um, so or they don't have a way to test it. So it's basically like a sight unseen. Um, so if you. Uh, if, if, if they're like, oh, the prices are like tested prices, but it's untested, just keep walking. There's another table. Somebody else has what you want. Um, Jeremy. Oh. Um, ah, for next year? Um, I mean, I thought it was cool. I'd be cool if it was the same. Um, but, you know, it'll be different. Um, oh, man. I don't even know of good advice. I probably don't have any because it sounds like everybody had better deals and found better stuff. Is it, w- would, the, it, would the advice be to maybe if you see Jeremy with a flask, um, <laughs> ask ask what's in it before you just start drinking? No, that should no. not be the advice. Oh, that's bad just advice. Drink it. Yeah, they should just drink it. Good. Trust <laughs> Jeremy. Just trust yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I was probably just overwhelmed um, by the amount of things. And I also, I, actually, this would be good advice. Um, have a list. I would say yes. go in with a mm-hmm. list of things. Like figure out beforehand what you need and want. And then kind of go in with that list. Because um, I don't. And I just have kind of these certain big things that I want. It's usually full machines. And then, you know, you guys are like, 
oh, I got a whole thing of uh, five and a quarter floppies for PC. And I was like, oh, I do need some five and a quarters for some PCs that I'm working on. But I didn't write that down. I didn't think of like projects that I'm actually in the middle of doing uh, to get the, the individual parts for that, because that's where you're really going to find lots of really, really good deals. Because, you know, if there's one guy selling it on eBay and the shipping's never that high because it's one part, you know, you're like, all right, I guess I'll pay $50 for this. And, you know, to finish a project out, whereas you can get that for $5 at BCF. So. Right. That's oh. it. And Jeremy, that's a, just real quick to interject. That's a real good um, tip because a lot of times you're at the show and things are happening so so fast with so many people around, you end up not even remembering what you needed. Like if you needed a certain memory or a processor or, or maybe a any a drive or something. Yeah, or just like a remember. bezel. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, like, yeah, just like little weird things that people will throw away or just give you. Yeah. So my advice is if you can make it to the show, make it yeah if you have the beans to um if you can drive it's probably better if you're planning on buying a bunch of stuff it was about 14 hours total for me across a couple of days and i would do it again because i'm a little insane <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and um i saw some chatter about the hotel in the chat and yeah it wasn't it wasn't the greatest hotel but it was i mean it was at the venue and it was relatively clean and the price was okay and not having to deal with yeah, having to bring your stuff uh, you know, off-site and not having to worry about parking during the event is definitely a nice a nice thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my, my advice is, yeah, go if you can. Rick? Agreed, yeah, just, just go any way you can, really. Uh, I mean, I prefer driving, even though I have a seven-hour drive one way, but not compared to 14, but it's definitely worth driving if you're interested in picking up a lot of stuff, because uh, I did the same thing last year. I was sitting there with a suitcase, and, and Chris and Chad actually took me to Walmart to buy a second suitcase <laughs> so I could bring more stuff home. Um, and it's just a matter of, like, just just go if you can. If you like retro computers and never been to an event like this, you might get blown yeah. away by just how insane it is as far as size goes. Uh, I do. I'm I'm split on the venue because I like how it is, but at the same time, I felt this year I was shimming in some of the aisles on Saturday morning. It was packed, absolutely packed, to the point where like you can almost not talk to anyone. Cause it was so loud. I looked over a couple of times. I'm gonna go check on LGR. It's like, well, the line's basically out the door. I'll come back later. Twenty minutes later, <laughs> the line is longer now. And it's like, <laughs> it's cool that it's so popular, but. Because like they may have to go to another venue. I don't know. I'm not a logistics person, so I have to worry about it. I just wanted to be there, I guess. So uh, I definitely recommend staying at the hotel if possible. I stayed there last year, and it was super nice. We'll walk down the hallway. I did not book it until they posted on the website, and it was already booked at that point. It was already full. So if you're going to book it at an on-site hotel next year, if they do the same thing, I'd probably recommend booking it well in advance, as soon as you know the date, to just mm -hmm. almost book it. Um, because I stayed at the first overflow hotel, which was pretty sketch. It was it was all right. There were some business deals going on in the hallway, I think. So uh, not the <laughs> vintage variety. Listen, um, Rick, I'm just yeah. going to say it. sex work is work. I don't yeah. know <laughs> what your European weird attitude is about hey, it. But... I'll do anything for OS2 Warp. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I would uh, do anything. <laughs> but I Here won't do that. Um <laughs> Yeah, just go if you can and definitely look at the accommodations as quickly as possible. Because, yeah, if it is the same venue and if it's as popular as it was this year or more, I mean, they will be f booked up immediately. And I mean, looking at the parking lot, we went to lunch, I think, right before the big YouTube talk. And we were there probably 20, 30 minutes early. We had to park down the street quite a ways. It was absolutely mm -hmm. packed. Yeah. So I love that it's popular, but it's also kind of a double edged sword. So. Alan, <laughs> I, I agree with most people about the hotel, but I'll get to that a little bit. I, I guess the biggest thing, and other people have said this too, is just don't overpay. Um, it's easy to go there and kind of see, you know, a table full of, say, PC towers, and, you know, they're all 40 bucks a piece, but I'm looking at those, I'm like, some of those are 10 $15 towers. And so you just got to kind of temper yourself because not everything there is a good deal, but a lot of, there are a lot of really good deals to be had. I mean, and a lot of the people, you know, the, the, the people that I dealt with, they were both really nice to, you know, to negotiate with. It was, it was no, you know, no stress or anything like that. So uh, definitely, you know, don't, don't just walk away. And this is, if it's, if it's something you really want, don't just necessarily walk away 
just because you think it's a little too high. You know, shoot that shoot that person an offer. They, they, they might take it. But, um, you know, when I was getting ready to for, to come to this, I was stressing out about, oh, I got to get this computer ready and this computer ready and all this stuff ready to, you know, to just like show off. And Ron was like, it's your first time, Alan. Just, you know, just float around, go enjoy things. And I, I absolutely think that that was the best advice because I didn't bring anything that I wasn't, you know, looking to get rid of. And I, I didn't bring anything to show off. I just walked around and enjoyed things and I bought a couple things and I talked to a lot of really cool people and met some new people. And uh, I think that was the best thing for me to do as a first time attendee uh, of the of the festival. As for as for that floating, I would absolutely say walk through the entire place three, four or five times, because I'll tell you, every single time I walked through there, I saw a few new things that I hadn't noticed the time before. Maybe somebody was already looking at that thing and in the way the first or second time I went through there. And, you know, it's just so much, it's almost overstimulating how much stuff there is that's cool that you want to pay attention to. And so just, just you know, uh, on Saturday, I probably walked through six or seven times. And, you know, so uh, I would absolutely bring a hand cart. Ron brought his little hand cart, uh, especially if you're going to buy things. Because I'll tell you what, when I bought that Ultra 2 and had to lug that thing up to the motel room because we had not, I had not uh, grabbed Ron's cart at that time. I was really wishing that I had. And so, and especially if you don't have, you know, a room at the venue itself and you got to bring that thing out to your car, you're, uh, I, I definitely just, you know, they're like 30 bucks at Walmart. I get one. I absolutely should, I promise you will appreciate it. Um, the hotel, if it's, if it's the same venue as, uh, as this year, next year, just know you're going to have to pay a lot of money for food at the hotel. There's no free food in there. Uh, so that's something to be in mind. Like water, water bottles are like three bucks. So just budget for that, I guess. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I did not do a good enough job of keeping an eye on the free table. Some people found some amazing stuff there. I did not find anything that amazing, but I bet if I would have, you know, swung by there a few more extra times, I probably would have. So I would absolutely, uh, uh, recommend that and then just the panels that i had planned to go to the big youtuber panel i bailed out because it was standing room only i needed to be there probably about 30 minutes before i was if you want to go to a big panel like that do not underestimate how many people are going to be there because they're going to fill that place up but that's all i got yeah i gotta just mirror what everyone else just said honestly about the hotel um definitely i would say staying there there's a huge benefit to staying there there are some differences in prices as you can imagine. I did not stay at the hotel. I, this is my first year I went there. And um, so actually both uh, Adam and I stayed at the same place. Um, about, it was about 10 minutes away. But the trick is, is that you got to leave and come back. So we had to be, or I had to be there early enough to be able to park and get a spot. But then I was basically stuck there to be to be sure to be able to have, you know, I could actually stay there and stuff. But uh, yeah, honestly, if it's your first time, like it was for me, I went in and I agree with, um, I think you said it, Rick, go with the list. I went with a list. I had a list of things I was looking for. And again, the stupid floppy drives, again, you know, simple things like that. This is what I really want to get and um, try to stick to that list and walk the rooms, man. My goodness, walk the rooms multiple, multiple times. You don't, you think you'd like, what am I going to do all this time? And no, there's so many new things. Every single time you walk around, you see new things. And I, and I don't understand. I did not see a single color classic there. Was, did, was there any? Did anyone see a single color classic? What is going no. on with that? With all just the, 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 you know how popular they are and then the mystic stuff not a single one so that was a little weird and so anyway maybe we'll, maybe we'll fix that next year but yeah honestly just go if you, if you haven't been to anything like that just go and do it and even if you can't stay at the venue and you have to stay somewhere else there's tons of places around there it's very easy to find places to eat and to get in and out and stuff just do it seriously all the color classics are broken and good night <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> cu couple of th everything else, a couple of other things. Bring uh, low denomination cash with you. Have a budget. <laughs> Bring fives, tens, and twenties. Because mm -hmm. if you got twenties and they don't have change, yeah, you know, you just you, gotta, you, gotta you just marked break. up your item. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And there was one thing I bought. I ended up spending an extra, you know three, four dollars for that I didn't need to because I didn't have change and neither did he. Uh, there's a, in the room I had, there was a fridge and a microwave. If you don't want to pay three bucks for a bottle of water, and I did because I didn't always have one with me, bring a, a you know, 12 pack of water bottles or whatever and stick it in that fridge when you get there. Mm -hmm. And there um, was, 
there was actually a water machine like down. I, I don't know a if re- it would be the refill next year, station. Yeah. I started yeah, filling up in my bottle yep. like every half hour. Um, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. You know, uh, there's nothing better than bringing a bag full of gorp. I don't know how many of you guys are Cub Scouts, but good, good old peanuts and raisins, right? Yeah. So you got snacks. You put them in Ziploc bags. That way, you've got something with you if you need it. I didn't buy any of the food at the vendor. I either went out um, or or just ate the stuff I had with me. Um, set a budget. Have a list. Like if you need memory, how many people can rattle off the top of their head exactly what RAM they need? Right, so make a list and bring it with you, and then everything else. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to echo a lot of things. Um, this is my first year staying on site. Last year, I was at a hotel, and some of the very fine people in this chat were helping me go back and forth, which I greatly appreciate. But even if it's only 15 minutes away, that's 15 minutes that the person you know, has to drive you there or back, or you have to get an Uber or a Lyft or something like that. Uh, so staying on site for me this year was very helpful. Unfortunately, I was on the second floor. There were no elevators. There's like a handicap accessible elevator, but they don't really allow you to use it to move things. And I had like three heavy CRTs I was lifting up and down. That got old real fast. So, um, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of the venue, but you know what? It, it was on site, so it was convenient. Um, I actually packed meals. I got like, you know, uh, the microwavable like um, you know curries and rice and stuff like that just because last year i know i was so busy i forgot to eat lunch and that was crashing at like three o'clock so that allowed me to go to my room which had a microwave and a fridge and just like warm up something in literally two minutes and then have like a, a quick meal and if i needed to get back out on the the show floor you know i didn't have to worry about oh i have to find a place to eat and come back especially you know if you have dietary needs like me and you have to you know be a little cautious about that uh, but I did bring a refillable bottle of water, which I thought was a good thing. Um, it's something that uh, I, I noticed a lot of people didn't know, like when the talks were, even though they had things posted. But you could check the website. Uh, the website had a, an updated listing of the talks and everything. But like everyone was saying, like you want to focus on the show floor because that's where the spontaneity is. Where thankfully, if you don't really feel like participating in the talks, they are recorded, which is great. So if you missed one, like I missed the YouTuber one. I was in the one last year, you know, visited the one last year. But I missed that one this year, so I'll just watch the recording of that. Um, the free table, like we were saying, you have to be like a hawk. Just keep going back to it. Just keep seeing what there is. <laughs> and uh, as Alan and, and everyone else was saying, you know, don't be afraid to haggle. You know, most of the time, people can be pretty firm on the pricing. But you know, especially if it's not like 9 a.m. on the first day, you can be like, hey, well, what about five bucks? Or, you know, what about a little bit less than that? Or, hey, ask questions. You know, does it work? When's the last time you turned it on? Uh, inspect it, you know. Uh, but yeah, really just doing that circle walking around. I didn't walk around enough. I, you know, kept getting stalled or kept getting distracted. And there are things I missed out on. I, I saw some photos. I'm like, oh, where was that? You know, I just must have passed it by. Um, and I think the ATM ran out of money again this year. It seems to be a recording trend. <laughs> so bring some cash. I mean, not everybody does digital payments. A lot of people were doing PayPal or Venmo or stuff like that. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind. If, if you're looking to buy something that's pretty pricey, you should bring the cash with you. But again, even if the ATM is broken and you have a car, you can probably go to you know a convenience store, use an ATM or something like that. Um, and there were a lot of tables that were just like for display only. Uh, so obviously ask if something is for sale. You'd be surprised sometimes if, you know, they actually wanted to sell it. But, um, you know, some things clearly weren't. They were just for display purposes only. And I think the other thing is to just talk to people you're going with and say, hey, look, um, I'm looking for this. Let me know if you find it. We actually had a little chat in Discord and made a great little spreadsheet, which I want to thank everyone for participating in, because I was saying, hey, I'm looking for this or I'm looking for that. And we were able to say, oh, well, actually, I could bring one of those if you need it. Or, you know, there's a lot of communication going on during the show of like, hey, did you see that? Did you see that? Do you want this? Do you want that? And. I mean, that's what we're there for. We're there for the community, and we're also there to, like, have fun and, and meet each other and hang out. But also, you know, hey, if you need this cable, you need this wire, you need this to complete your collection, you know, don't be silent about it. You know, no one's going to steal it from you if you're among friends. You know, they're, they're going to, you know, maybe maybe need a little bribe to give it to you. But that's, you know, that's all in the day's work. But, yeah, that was my experience. Yeah, yeah, everybody had some, had some really great advice. And I think that there's, like, 
there's almost like uh, three different experiences you can have at the show. And what I mean by that is that you're, you're going to just buy, right? You could also be going to just look at the exhibits or you could just go and, and listen to the talks that are there. But you could do all three at the same time. But I say that because if you're going to do all those, you, you, you might be good to go in order. And what I mean by that is that if you're, if you're going to there to buy, then you put your game face on that first morning at nine o'clock and you focus on um, hitting the tables, right? Because the, the exhibits will be there for the rest of the weekend. Um, but some of the stuff that you might be after might be sold. So um, that would be my suggestion is to get in there. If you're, if you're there to buy, hit all the tables up really quick. And then once you've kind of seen everything, then you can kind of go look at the exhibits and then maybe, maybe swing back a little bit later. The other thing I wanted to mention too, is that if you've ever had anything retro shipped to you and had to get destroyed in mail, in the mail, um, that shows how, that, that's another thing that you can look at at the show, right? Is that you can test it here, you can look at it and you can bring it home and it'll be safe. So sometimes I'll pay a little bit more um, to buy it at a show because I can see it there. I can check the quality. And I know it's not going to get destroyed in shipping uh, instead of, you know, maybe buying it on eBay and maybe having it get destroyed. Right. Um, and just because it's, it's, it's covered under insurance does not mean that you're going to get a complete mm -hmm. refund. You have to battle FedEx. You have to battle UPS against them. And that's why I always like to buy local whenever I can. Right. And coming here, not everybody has a large metropolitan area where they can have all these computer deals. You might live in a rural area and you have no access to, you know, Craigslist or these Facebook marketplaces. So this is a really great place to come if you're looking to get started in the um, in, in retro computing. And I wanted to share real quick, uh, since this is this show is local to me and I've been going there for so long. Um, Jason Timmons is the the man who runs this with a bunch of volunteers. And can, we, can you guys see, wait, can you see my screen or no? You will in just a second. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the, the Vintage yeah. uh, Midwest <laughs> site. And this was just posted by Jason Timmons, again, who runs the show. And one thing that's interesting about this show is, is it's completely free. You walk in there, you do not have to pay cover. And the way that they pay for the show is everybody's donation. So if you come to the show, you can donate by putting into the box, just putting a little bit of cash into the box, or you can donate by putting things into the auction that they have every night, or you could put uh, things into the garage sale. So uh, you bring in like an old computer, they'll slap a price on it, put it on the table, and that's a garage sale for the show. And they also um, make a little bit of money from the t-shirt. So that's how they can put on that show for, for free for you. So more money you can use to buy retro stuff at the show um, every year. But if those if that doesn't happen, then we got problems. And he's even mentioning right in here in this that they might even have to look at a bigger venue next year because it, because it almost got out of hand with how many people were there. And yeah. he's he's happy that the show is growing so fast, but it's also starting to turn into a pretty big thing where it's like, hey, there's no parking. We can't even get through the aisle. So, um, again, he put on a fantastic show and everybody else had some really great tips here. Yeah. Uh, and there's no park or there's a, they don't charge for parking. Yep, no so parking it's, charge. Yeah, either. it's it's That's a real, a it's a weird, thing. it's a city show, but like kind of not in the same way. So, but really great. Hey, Adam. Hey, what? So I was going to add on to what uh, Mr. McIntosh just said about uh, doing this for sale tables first. The other reason you want to do that is even if you don't want to buy stuff. A lot of cool stuff is there that's for sale that you might not see on any of the just um you know exhibit tables so if you want to see like a lisa and a next cube and a and a, a you know some sgi workstations and some model 30s and stuff they're for sale but you can still play around with them you can still look at them so if it, and those will go away because some if you don't buy it somebody else is probably going to buy it and then you're not going to be able to see it so like when i got there I've, I checked out all kinds of stuff, even if I had no interest in buying it. It's just things I wanted to just, just kind of check out, kind of things outside of my my normal uh, flow of, of uh, hobby. But, I mean, I saw all kinds of crazy stuff that, I mean, like weird British computers that we don't usually see over here, like CPCs and Amstrads and, and, uh, and, and BBC micros and all kinds of stuff like that. A lot of ZX Spectrums and all kinds of fairly unusual stuff and and a lot of that stuff got sold pretty quick and unless they had it priced you know dumb they were gone like 
even even on Friday night, and and a lot of it just went out the door early Saturday. Like people ran in, like I want this, you know, this particular PS2, and it was just gone. So then when you're done with all that, and then you at the same time you can buy stuff, and then you know take your time and just wander around and look at all the the cool stuff that's going to be there the, for the whole time. And as far as the the panels go, I mean, I went and saw Ron and, and Steve. Yeah. Um, but like I skipped the YouTubers because it, like, it, it was crowded. And the thing is, it's kind of cool to be in the room while it's live, but you can watch that on YouTube after. So while while almost nice. everybody's in there watching LGR and, and Ken yuck it up, you have the floor kind of empty for that time. And it's that was a like prime this. time to look around, believe me. <laughs> it really <Yeah>. was. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. One more thing to add on top of what um, Adam was saying, and actually what Ron was saying, what, what you were, but you got to budget your money when you go there. Is um, while you, if you pass something up, you 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 put the risk that it could be sold. But keep in mind that that item might be at the next table too. And Adam and I were talking about this. We were talking about there was a two GS monitor sitting there, and we asked him how much he was, he was selling it for. He was selling for 120 bucks. And then there was another one, three tables down. He was selling it for twenty five bucks. So, again, just kind of. Well, yeah, there was a guy selling two GSs for yeah. two forty nine, and yeah. I mean, I, I have this board out of this one because it needs some work, but I got a two GS for forty bucks. So, it's a steal of the century. Um, um, Matt last year had a whole rack of like beige uh, all in one Max, and he had like. 128s and 512s for $35. Just the machine untested, you figure it out, uh, but 35 bucks. So instead, I bought a, a Super Drive SE. <laughs> <laughs> That's rare, Ron. Rare. Boss, <laughs> <awesome. Yeah. laughs> yep. I didn't buy any Compact Max. I think it's the first time I've gone to one of these types of shows and didn't buy a Compact Max. Mm -hmm. Or you should have you should have made the trip to Cape Girardeau. You would have gotten like five or six of them shoved in your car <laughs> when you weren't looking. <laughs> so. And some Performa Plus monitors too. Yeah, yeah. My my uh, Jeep was pretty full when I left that place. Yeah. <laughs> but I, had, I I bought a bunch of monitors. I haven't shown you guys those, but there's just like at least five of them. Mm -hmm. Well, some of us shifting here uh, a little bit away from um, VCF, some of us uh, made a separate ship or a, sec a separate trip down to my town, which is Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Uh, and because uh, I had I had been collecting things up since before the pandemic. Um, I, I, I work in higher ed and a lot of people kind of reach out to me and they'll say, you know, we're getting ready to move and we just got to get rid of all this stuff. And so um, you you go over to their house and it'll be like, oh, it's like a couple of two E's and monitors and like a whole stack of discs and stuff. And so you're like, OK, well, I'll find it a good home. I'm not going to sell anything. I'm going to find I, will, I might trade something, but I'm certainly not going to get cash out of this. We're going to like trade it off and, and find good homes for all these items. And um, there were a couple of people in St. Louis that have given me things or or they've had parents pass away that were educators and were like, you know, just find a good home for this. This was this was my mom's computer that she used in her classroom for like 30 years while she was a teacher. I, I, I went over to um, a gentleman's house and I, I he was like, oh, we got all this stuff. We got all this stuff. Just you got to take all this stuff. Mom passed and I just can't. I, I, I can't keep holding on to it because it's it's I've got to this is part of my healing and moving on and I'm literally like loading this um, mm -hmm. like this 2C and I mean it's it's all grubby with like a million kids fingerprints and stuff on it and he's over there crying because it's just such this it's this emotional release to be able to like move this stuff on to people who enjoy it and so I and so I had that moment myself that all these trips and because uh, Alan and I have like driven, we drove to Indiana to save um, a ton of uh, G5s and G5 towers and um, uh, power computing machines from just going to the scrapyard. Uh, we literally, we drove like 14 hours one day, just sh uh, cannonballed over there to pick all this stuff up and bring it back just to save it from the recyclers. And so it was really cool when everybody showed up uh, and took all this junk off my hands. <laughs> and and, and I, want to say, I want to say, Ron, 
-hmm. thank you for the junk from the bottom of my heart, but also (laughs) that power computing tower you gave me, Mm -hmm. someone put some serious upgrades in there. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Because the guy that we got all that stuff from, um, I, Alan might even be able to add on to this, but he ran like some sort of like like desktop publishing or like videography business or something like that. So uh, he, he was he was telling us about how everything it was like no expense was spared because I wrote it all off. I've never seen someone with so many preset extensions in oh. uh, Mac OS 9. <laughs> I'm just trying to adjust the camera here of like, you know, how many extension sets they needed? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. right. Wow. Right. Wait. Right. There we go. Yeah, that's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's if you're gonna do this task, this is how it's tweaked. If you're gonna do this task, this is how it's tweaked. So, so hopefully everybody enjoys all the all the fun things and all that. And thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm probably gonna release a, a video here in a week or so, just kind of documenting, uh, just kind of like friends coming to town. I, I took not a ton of pictures, but. Um, just a few things. And, and then after um, Eric and Tom uh, took off, um, Alan also lives local. So he kind of went back to the re- revolved back into the real world, but I had Steve for another day. And so we, we went to St. Louis, we went to Laclade computer trading company, which is a kind of a, a recycle, keep it out of the junk pile kind of store in Afton, Missouri up near it's kind of St. Louis County. And then we went and visited uh, Jeremy at his retro bar. Which was a surprise because I thought I was going to be admitted into an insane asylum. Ron was very vague <laughs> on the details. He said, ring this door, don't make any loud noises, and you may survive the night. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we pulled up We pulled up to Jeremy's, and um, they live in like a, a, a this very nice brick uh, building. And I, I was like, I said, we're here. And Steve's like, where's here? And I said, you'll have to ring the door to find out. And so he went up there and it's, and Steve was so discombobulated by all this. He was like, should I knock? I was like, Steve, there's a ring. <laughs> they already know we're here. They probably have candy. I mean, yeah. I was like, just press the button. So yeah. I feel like I you were like, don't tell Steve that we're coming up. Yeah. I just thought it'd be a nice surprise. <laughs> no, it, it, it was a very nice surprise. And I, I can't thank you enough for setting up and Jeremy and everyone for being so nice and letting us in. Cause Jeremy has a one heck of a setup. <laughs> and now of course I showed those photos to my wife and she, her, her <laughs> says, well, why can't yours look? Like so, <laughs> I showed the same pictures. I said, look at this guy's basement. Now look at Steve's. Okay. It's like, like <laughs> <laughs> Look at your basement. Now look at mine. Look at your basement. Now look at mine. <laughs> this is your basement on recapping. You know? <laughs> no. but I just showed uh, Steve the part that is more like his basement. Which I enjoyed a lot. <laughs> Thank you. For I do have a, there's a back of house. There is a, a another room that has you know, all the stuff that's in progress of being worked on. That's more my style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's an amazing collection and, and Jeremy... Uh, is is such a wonderful host, uh, Megan, a wonderful host. Just uh, you know, took care of us while we were there. I mean, so yeah, again, hook you guys up with snacks. Jeez. I know. I was, uh, and it was, <laughs> and uh, for dietary stuff, they were. Uh, uh, Megan was like, well, "I think that these are all kind of the best options, but look at labels." And it was like, you know, if it would have been like any place else, it'd have been like they'd have just thrown like a, a thing of Oscar Mayer bologna <laughs> on the table and been like. <laughs> Like, I, th- I think there's some toothpicks like under the couch cushion. <laughs> Just figure it out. But no, we had an amazing time. And then uh, Steve got on his way, and then I, I got on my way, and then uh, uh, cycled back to reality, and then the depression set in. <laughs> it's but always. I do, the, I do the, want to say. I was well, excited I, that you guys went to that Laclede computer mm-hmm. trading company because I didn't know that that existed, and it's so close. Mm-hmm. I literally yeah. had sushi like three blocks from that place a couple weeks ago or last week or uh, oh no it was Monday uh, this it, mm-hmm. and then I was just like oh that's so yeah I, I, I liked your video on that so the only yeah, reason I know about it is because of Alan because oh. Alan Alan set up a, a buy he went up to St. Louis and bought this like super hacked out Mac Pro from this guy that I guess was like you know big big into stuff. And I bought like a couple little things from him. He had a ton of stuff. And he was like, oh, hey, have you guys ever been over to whatever? And I was like, I've never heard of it. 
And so uh, based on Alan making a connection with this guy, we found out about it. So it's kind of one of those best kept secret things. Yeah. That's Rick, your children are unruly. I know. This is Kirby the Corgi. He made an appearance, so. <laughs> Looks very concerned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is Does going on? I'm lying down here with all these red on our computers. Yeah. Uh, what did you I'm think sorry. about when you went, Alan? Yeah. About uh, Jeremy's place? Oh, well, oh, oh Laclade? Yeah. I know you've been to Jeremy's place. <laughs> well, but yeah. But, well, <clears throat> I, excuse me. <clears throat> Laclade is is really cool because they've got, you know, like, like you were saying in your video, affordable stuff. But, you know, not junk. I mean, that those kind of uh, enterprise machines, especially those Dells, that's kind of my kind of PC. I love to get a hold of those and just kind of use them for stuff around the house. And it's kind of uh, handy to have a place like that to go and get that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you, the stuff that they have on display there is really a sight to behold. And it's a, kind of like at the festival, stuff that's really cool to see in person that maybe you would have not expected to get to see in person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, Eric, no, I, Eric I, you I, were going to... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not meaning to step over people. <laughs> Eric, you were going to say something. What, what were you... before? I, I was just going to say, I really up. have to get off the stream. Um, okay. So... Bye and and thank you, Ron. Oh, you're yeah. an excellent host. Oh, I had a great time, and I'm surrounded by a year's worth of tech to go through. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and thanks for you know, uh, Steve, for introducing me to so many people. It was great. I loved seeing everybody in 3D instead of just 2D, and I I cannot wait for next year. It oh, yeah. is is just going to be a blast. I'm committed to going to every year from now on. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you can't get away from me. Yeah. Not even if you try. Eric, thanks for thanks for stopping by this evening. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Bye everybody. Bye. Happy Eric. Eric. And then Eric. and then sorry, Steve. And then hey, let's watch Retro Tech Chris's video and then yes. let's answer some questions. Okay. Sure. No, I I just want to thank you, Ron, for bringing us to, you know, all around town. You are a great host showing us a lot of cool things and you know, just like that little computer shop that you did the video of which everyone should check out uh there was just you know amazing finds there little things uh you know little uh, mavica cdr discs for camcorders and cameras uh little pc cards and a bin full of remote controls that ron and i found some goodies in and so it was just a lot of fun just you know going around town and, and you know if you're in the area for the event you might as well check out some of the surrounding bits, maybe come early or stay a few days later, uh, because there's there's more to it than just that. You know, there's some great museums in the area, too. So maybe next time I'm going to make a little bit of a trip out of it. So thanks again, Ron. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. I'll also, I'll also thank Ron for taking us around his town because it was a really nice town. We got to see the history of it. We got some really delicious burritos, you know, <laughs> with, and then everything else is a bonus. You know, everything's about the burrito. But uh it was just yeah, really enjoyable day. Well, I'm really glad that I had uh, you guys in town and everybody else. The the invite is extended to you, folks in chat. If you're ever coming through, um, reach out to me. I'm happy to uh, meet up with you and we'll do some lunch and go on a little tour of town and just have some fun. So very reasonable prices. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> kind of that's that's kind of the the thing with being in the middle of nowhere. Steve, come to my place, get some of these IMAX out of my hair. Steve's that, very that reasonable. Too. <laughs> yeah, that's our next mission is that uh, we cleaned out my uh, horde and now we got to work on Alan's because you can see him over his shoulder over there. I see it. Um, yeah. And a lot of those, those are from uh, Jeremy's retro bar because when Jeremy yep. went through and cleaned up his collection, um, we, we ran up there and that's kind of how I got to meet Jeremy. I mean, there's I've a, been watching the channel, but I'd never met him. So there's a pattern here of everyone yeah. just kind of like. Here, you should keep these to, to right. you know, give them a good home. I'm like, yes. And then, like, nice. you can make room for more stuff. It's here to come up. Let's, you know, like, I was it, just it, like, I was, was trying fine. to one off them on, I think, Facebook or something, or I think I put it on Twitter. And then Ron's like, you need them to a good home. I'll take them. And yeah. Then we'll we'll take them and we'll, we'll shift them and we'll figure it out because I, that whole thing of like, well, I guess I'll mail. Uh, not mail and iMac, but like it's like, well, like all these things, and I'm going to the post office that many times. Just give it away to one person that's got like the 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 network to move that stuff. Actually, so, if I can tangent on that a little bit, so many of you saw on Twitter because a person here in Omaha, Nebraska, tagged everyone on Twitter, saying they had a stash yeah. of uh, CRT <laughs> monitors. Right? Um, I think uh, uh, Mac Librarian is in the chat or two. I think she got a couple from there as well, but. Mm -hmm. 
the guy basically got an old uh, university lab set up, and there was a wall of CRTs. And, I mean, he was just desperate for him to go somewhere. He had saved them, kept them in his basement for 15 years. I ended up dragging, I think, five of those monitors with me to VCF. Because it's like, again, shipping one of those, I'm not a Mac expert, but it feels like that would not survive. They were pretty brittle. Uh, but just being able to get them somewhere where they might get used is pretty awesome. And by the time that I got there, uh, I came back again to get some more monitors because I'm a sucker. And uh, the guy was just like, why don't you take, like, the rest to VCF? I'm like, in a perfect world, I would. I just can't haul that many. Uh, but he was desperate for them to go to places. Fortunately, at the end of it all, there was almost nothing left. So at least that made it people feel nice about it. There was almost nothing left in that stash, except more 1212s, a lot more 1212s. That was Ooh, pretty much yeah. it. So, mm -hmm. But thank you for bringing that page display to me. I've wanted mm -hmm. one of those since forever. So to finally have one is great. Mm -hmm. So, hey, let's take a second. Let's watch um, Chris's video, and then we'll come back and we'll do maybe some Q&A in the audience, and we'll wrap things up, because I know it's, it's pr getting pretty late for some folks on the East Coast. So, all right. Let me go ahead. Let me figure out how to do this. Uh, I'm getting there. Press start. No. Yes. It's Alt. Uh, what? Okay, Alt F4. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on. I have to. I don't. I'll play this for a second. You tell me if you get audio. No audio. OK. Then I have to do it where you play it as a file. Yeah. If you just upload it, it should just take a sec. Well, you're very generous with how fast you think my internet is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hi, everyone. I'm Audio? Chris Lenderman, otherwise known as Retro Tech Chris. And I was talking to Ron from Ron's Computer Videos recently, and he had this idea for all of these folks who went to VCF Midwest to answer a few questions and talk about their experience. I absolutely loved it. Uh, first, I'll say, if you haven't gone in the past and you have a way to get there, you should find a way to get to VCF Midwest next year. This was my second year, and I absolutely love it. So Ron gave me a couple of questions to answer. Uh, really good questions. I'm just going to kind of look at those, and I'll answer them. Uh, the first one is the best exhibit. And there was an exhibit where somebody had basically found a way to read Commodore 64 floppy disks off of the internet. And I'll put some B-roll footage in here so that you can see it as I talk about it. But I made a new friend, and it was great to see uh, this exhibit. Um, I probably didn't spend as much time looking at the exhibits as I should have. More on that in a minute. But I really, really enjoyed that exhibit. And as you may know, I'm an IBM PC guy. So it was kind of fun to see that. And I think it's awesome when people create uh, new tech to enhance the old tech. So I was real excited to see that. Let's see. So the most amazing pickup, um, you're looking at my pickups here and I'll do a kind of close up on it. The most fun pickup was this 386 motherboard that I picked up. But really, if you haven't been to the show, you'll find that everything is just so accessible and reasonable. These optical drives that you see behind me and I'll do a close up on those as well. I paid like $3 a piece for a 1.2 megabyte floppy drive, $15. Now, I haven't tested any of this stuff, but I think it'll work. I didn't really intend to buy anything. I made the joke with some folks that I brought a suitcase, I could pack it and fill it up, and I had up to 50 pounds, and <laughs> I came home with 38 and a half, so maybe we'll call that a missed opportunity. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I would say this motherboard was probably the coolest thing that I picked up. Let's see, uh, favorite experience, uh, just in general, hanging out with folks. So I tell people I go to these events for, well, this, this event in particular for three reasons. It's the people, it's the exhibits, and the items to pick up. And it's kind of in that order. I might have reversed the last two there a little bit this year, but really it's the people. I absolutely love it. It's like a three-day party to hang out with people. I got to meet in person a lot of retro YouTubers that I've met online over the past year, which is really the reason I do this. It's twofold. One is to share what I know, and two, it's to meet people. So that's the most exciting thing about that. 
I was told that I was an introvert at some point in my past, or I think I discovered myself to be one, but maybe I'm not. So I'm more <laughs> confused now than ever, but I had a great time just meeting folks and hanging out, uh, going out and having meals with folks. It was absolutely wonderful. Okay, uh, what do I want to see next year? More of the same. I just want to go back and hang out with people again. Uh, that's really what I want to do. We'll see some cool exhibits. We'll see what people have been up to over the past year. I also uh, look forward to meeting some new friends. I know that uh, we'll meet some new friends as the year goes by. So again, that, that's really why I go. Uh, but wow, uh, having been there two times, I'll tell you, it's like, uh, it, it's kind of interesting to get into the element and go to this place each time and to see everybody. It's like it's a place I've always been. I can't really explain it, but it's really a lot of fun and I can't wait till next year. So. Uh, everybody watching this, thanks for watching. Uh, definitely consider going to VCF Midwest in the future. Uh, there were a couple of folks who I twisted their arm. They can identify themselves if they want, <laughs> and they ended up going. Um, there's a reason why. Uh, if you don't go, you really miss out. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching this, and uh, enjoy the rest of the live stream. Bye for now. Pretty cool, right? And, and it's awesome. it's weird how that just mirrored uh, what everybody else said in the stream. Um, it's uh, I, I think everybody, especially this group of people, kind of have are like minded in a lot of those ways. So it's uh, thank you, Chris, for putting that video together. That was very kind of you. I know you were kind of double booked this evening, so. But let's take let's take just a couple minutes. We'll wrap this up. I, it's we're coming up on two hours. Um, Let's go ahead and just do a very quick uh, Q&A. Um, I'll, I'll read questions out of chat, and you guys can feel free to just hop in spontaneously and answer them. Um, for, for folks that have been to both West and East, which do you feel is the better show? And that was asked by Trina. West West is, I've been to West multiple times, and you pay to get in, and there's a link assignment section for the for what you buy which mm -hmm. means it's just not very good because everything has to go into consignment. Um, it's a much, much smaller show. So what's nice about it, at least you do get to connect with people that are local to my area. Um, but yeah, it's an entirely different show from Midwest though. What about East? <laughs> yes, it is, is great, but it's smaller, yeah. Yeah, and one thing about East is it's, you know, same deal like Carl said about West is there's a consignment area. So, you know, VCF gets, a cut out of um, all the sales, which I mean is nice because they get the money. But on the other hand, it, it's a know, much it's smaller so selection of stuff for sale too, though. Yeah, and the I mean, the show itself is definitely a lot smaller, and the layout is kind of weird because it's at a old naval base or an old military base or something, which ha which hosts like some museums and stuff too. Um, but it, it's also like a shorter show. Like I stayed there, I hung out there with um, Steve and Sean and Mike um on saturday night and i think it was like seven o'clock is when we left and it was like dead like nobody was there versus uh i finished the last talk at you know midwest at midnight and they walk out and there's this there's this huge after party going on <laughs> and of course up. <laughs> it was 1 a.m eastern time and i was asleep so i just went back to my room but uh next year i'll be at the after party until you know 4 a.m with the rest of you guys <laughs> But I think they're both, you know, really good, um, mm -hmm. really good events. I'd say if you have to travel for one, personally, I would travel for Midwest instead of East. But um, I mean, I'm close enough to East that it's like a two and a half hour drive. So I'm going to East every day or every every year for the rest of you know, eternity. I think you have to wait for them to open the door. You can't just show up any time you want to say. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just here really early. In there? Do you guys have any stuff? I have a van. <laughs> VCF East isn't for four more months. Yeah, I know. I'm just waiting. <laughs> but the VCF East, also, they have, like, a, a swap meet, which is a different event. And that's more of, like, it's outdoors. It's just all on the blacktop. At least, uh, you know, it is when they have it in the warmer months. I don't know if, how this one's going to be. But uh, there was a lot of stuff at the swap meet because people just, like, bring everything. So it's a completely different vibe from, like, the consignment Ooh. of the VCF East event. But... Either way, I like both just because I'm kind of closer to them. And yeah, VCF Midwest just 
huge, completely different show, different vibe, but I love them both. Very cool. Um, uh, the Macintosh librarian in chat asked, um, and this was kind of answered, but it'd be good to have like a concise kind of thing. Um, uh, just what advice would you give to people that are traveling in? Um, and then maybe some advice about uh, staying at the hotel. Um, is I mean, it seems like the answer was to, to stay on site. That seems like the, the best advice that people were giving. But if you, um, if you are uh, forced to stay off site, is there, um, has anybody stayed anywhere that they might recommend? The Hilton I've Garden stayed at two in different, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, we, we were at the Hilton Garden Inn and last year I was at the Hilton Suites, which is right next to the Garden Inn. Those are both uh, yep. good quality hotels. And there's other cheaper stuff too, like, you know, comfort suites and, and, and whatnot. And they're all five minute drive. If you have to Uber, it's mm -hmm. pretty close. And of course, if we're all there, anybody can reach out, we'll give you a ride. Yeah. And there I is would... a huge Walmart, right? Really close to the venue, assuming they have it at the same place. There's a huge Walmart there. You can get a lot of food and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty convenient. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh Kate in the chat said, Adam knows his hotels. And that's true. Adam, yes. Adam's a pretty <laughs> serious traveler. Uh, was, yeah, actually, I chose to stay at the Hilton because I have a lot of points. So it was free for me. So right, I'm, right. So I, I would definitely say also that um, uh, people coming in, uh, we, we set up this year just basically kind of as a beta test. Um, we created a Discord channel that is, it's it's called Macintosh Friends, but obviously that extends to all of our good friends. Uh, Rick, you did a, a video I, about uh, 8100 recently, hey, which I, you then gave to me. Thank you very much. I am being corrupted by the Mac. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but, I'm not much of a Mac guy, but I'm getting, I'm getting used to it. I'm dipping my toe in it. <laughs> it's got some stuff. So, But um, we, we created the Discord. I say we, I did, but but uh, one of our friends here did. And um, and we use that to kind of coordinate and make sure that people were, hey, we're going to lunch, make sure people are where they need to be. And then there was also kind of like a care aspect to that too. Because um, when you get there, it's like, Steve, when's the last time you had a meal? Well, you need to drink something. Why don't you have a seat for a few minutes? So it's good to have um, a little bit of a support yeah. network there to kind of help you at the event if you're if you're just traveling by yourself. So I love that. Yeah, so so people just... are like putting out a thing like again, like, hey, keyboards or hey, mm -hmm. go look at this thing. And everyone was looking out for each other. That was awesome because you can't be everywhere at once. And things were dropping fast. Like mm -hmm. there's a deal here and people were like putting that out. It was great. That's like alert, alert! There's Apple twos at the at the back door. <laughs> the back door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, I just posted the uh, link in the chat for the Discord. So if you're <laughs> yeah, three and six days till next VCF Midwest, plenty of <laughs> <laughs> plenty of time to start planning. <laughs> to start planning. Um, I think this question is specifically for Steve. Uh, Kate also asked, "Was it scary to be a presenter?" <laughs> no, it wasn't. That. We had we had. Uh, uh, I think the Lisa talk I was in. There was about fifty or sixty people, and I think the uh, vintage Mac talk we did. There was probably about sixty or seventy people present. Um, you know, our talks are pretty late in the day, so I think if they were a little earlier, we may have gotten more people there. Um, so I, I think you know. You never know how many people are going to come to these things. The YouTuber one was jam packed. I wasn't expecting that, but I think if if our talk was maybe a little earlier, uh, maybe before dinner or directly after dinner. But again, you can't tell because after you know people go out to eat, they may stay late. They may not come back to the show. So I think that the most popular shows are probably going to be in the morning and the afternoon. But people like me probably won't go to those because you're going to be circling around the rooms, yes. you know, trying to find some good deals. But it wasn't scary. I had Ron there. Uh, to uh, to shelter me from all those horrible questions about why I should keep, you know, and, and threats about why I should keep batteries inside my computers, you know. Yes, so I was exactly. Okay. Yeah, in, in my uh, weird experience, in, in my video that I do the walkthrough on Friday night, um, I was walking around and somebody, I guess, clocked me and was like, was like, hey, you're Ron from Ron's computer videos. And I said, yes, yes, I am. And he goes, well, you're wrong about the battery stuff. <laughs> And I, and I was, uh, <laughs> You're wrong. I love it. I, I wish I'd seen that. I, well, it's in the video. So, uh, but it, to, to paraphrase, it was like, okay, well, I mean, I understand. It's, I mean, not everybody's, you know, on on, on board. But, um, but more than anything, uh, you'll never guess what else I'm wrong about. 
I'm wrong about all kinds of things. And I was just, you know, have a great show. <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, diffuse and, and move on. But, I say that um, your guys' presentation was awesome. As someone who's just getting into the Mac world, that presentation was It was really killer. good. Killer. It really was. It was really, Steve, really good. Steve, there, there's more information about that. Actually, uh, the, the event reached out to me today, and I got them our slide deck so that way that they can go ahead and add that into the official video that is going to make it out to the VCF Midwest uh, YouTube page. But, Steve, is there something you want to tease here this evening? Sure. So are you familiar with Lord of the Rings? You know, how you know the movie came out, and then you know a few mm -hmm. months or years later, there was like a 20-hour extended cut of the film? I remember that. Well, that's that's sort of you know what what we did. Uh, so yesterday, Ron and I had a long chat, and oh, uh, somehow I edited it down, and I edited some visuals and stuff like that. And this master class of Macintosh collecting clocks in at two hours and forty two minutes. But we cover a lot, and I mean like every trick in the book for every one of these machines that we cover. No stones unturned. So if you you really want to dive into it we're going to be posting that sometime soon there will be chapters in there so you don't have to watch the whole thing if you're interested in just skipping to a particular machine or anything like mm -hmm. that you can do it it's designed you know to be like yeah you probably won't watch the whole thing in one sitting but there are chapters in there uh, right. i have visual cues if we're talking about capacitors or a special port or something like that so the design of this is like the end all be all introduction to these desktop beige computers. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to be like, oh, yeah, you have to click the link and follow this thing to find the adapter that we're talking about. No, here's a picture on the screen. So right. um, that's going to be coming out. And uh, mm -hmm. I thank Ron so much for, you know, spending time to put that presentation together because I think it was a great jumping off point for the both of us to just get a lot of ideas on the page. I've been wanting to do something like that for a while. Yeah. And actually, um, not to toot our own horn, but David Sedaris called it the most important televisual event since Quantum Leap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two hours and a, two and a half hours is a long time to say buy an IBM instead. I'm just saying. It's a fairly definitive rundown of all of the um, beige Max. So everything running all the way up kind of to the release of the, um, the iMac G3. So it's and yes, um, Garth. Rifa caps are mentioned. Yes, they are. <laughs> so we 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 are um, we punish the guilty and we and we praise uh, <laughs> the the good the good machines that uh, <laughs> that Apple did produce. That's jury and excuse jury. <laughs> That's right. It's well, it's we're trying to save people time and, and trouble no. and, and heartache. So it's. Uh, so we did our best. If but. you're bad, we'll show you the five-hour cut where we just talk about the 6200. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. so. I was just looking through the box of stuff you gave me, Ron, the software, but I found that there yeah. was a book in here. Yeah. It's, it's good because uh, now I can learn all about the Apple II. Finally. Nice. <laughs> Finally. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. So uh, does anybody else have anything yeah, Ron, for the more, good of the group? One more or? thing, Ron. One yeah. more thing. Uh, we, we can't end this stream without talking about one very important item. And let me see if I can share it up. And I think, Garth, you know okay. where I'm going with this, don't oh, you? No. Yep. Mine are exactly good. So real quick. <laughs> oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. This to me. That was awesome. Was one of the most interesting things at the show. And I'll tell you, uh, here's what we'll do. I'll tell my part of it. And maybe, Garth, you can tell the part where it went for auction. But um, I was looking over in one of the guys' uh um, tables and then off to the the corner all the way in the back was this cube and keep in mind the back of this cube was facing the window so i didn't see it and i'm looking at and then i looked at the side i was like oh no so i talked to the guy i'm like hey what's the story behind this thing um and he's like oh you know i had three of these guys and then i had to move them out of the garage because there were there was some work being done in there i put them under a tarp but then a storm came and the tarp blew off and then well it was outside for over a month i'm like oh no <laughs> He's like, I'm like, are you selling? He's like, well, I'm going to put it in the auction. I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. So then um, I, I tell the guys about it. We go over there and look at it. And, and Garth, you took a picture of this. And then he put it in the auction. And I'll let you get to where it goes. But I, I sent a message to Steve. I'm like, Steve, I need you to bid on this for me. <laughs> and first, uh -huh. I know he's thinking that I'm crazy. But when I saw this thing, it was just such a weird feeling. Like I, I almost want to save this thing because it's just so sad that's been sitting out like this for so long. But anyway, take it away what actually happened at the auction. Yeah, I was in the auction, it was hilarious. People are talking about it and like, I was. we had a whole betting pool going on, like what it was gonna go for. And I said like, so 
are they going to actually talk about what it is? Are they just going to show it and like not show the back or how horrible it was and stuff, right? And I, so I always said like five hundred dollars, but um, no, in the auction they they took it apart, and the best part was the guy was taking the battery out. <laughs> It was hilarious, and then I was like, and he's like ter- carefully putting the battery back in. And was like, no, no, what are you doing, you fool? Right? And anyway, but yeah, they put it back, but they were very clear. It was the mud cube. They called it the mud cube. It was the mud cube, and it went up to three hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. So, but it's nice because all the money went for VCF, right? Yeah, yeah. all the all that money went to VCF. And what's funny is, is that Steve replied to me. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll bid. What do you think about fifty bucks? And I think I said, yeah. <laughs> no. And then he replies back. He's like, oops, sorry, I didn't get to do it because it went for three fifty. <laughs> I, I had yeah. my hand like half raised <laughs> because the auctioneer is like an eagle. Like he'll see yeah. you twitch your finger, and you know he'll he'll put you put you on the on there for for paying it. And so the bidding started, I think at uh, I think it was thirty or forty or something. So I was about to raise my hand, then it was like fifty, a hundred. I'm like, oh well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that sold for three fifty, and I immediately just left the room. I'm like, yeah. this, these prices are crazy. Uh, well, so I'm really were, curious who bought that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, so who who was saying in the Discord that someone kn- knew the person that was that bought it, and then they were actually going to try to get it uh, fixed up and restored? So that will be an, actually a pretty interesting story. story if they can get it yeah. fixed up and, and yeah. restored. Yeah, the, the logic board they actually pulled out. Uh, during you know the auction and it looked pretty good like there, there it was surprisingly clean for the amount of crap it went through but I, I think also with the auction and i've recorded some clips so i'm going to you know be sharing those and hopefully they have the full recording that they'll share but you know part of the auctions were that people were s- buying stuff at a higher than normal price yeah. to support yeah, bcf yeah. because there was a performa 630 with a dos card that you would never expect to pay a hundred dollars for and it went for 400 bucks and the guy was right behind me and so i handed him mac 84 stickers i'm like dude here's a sticker like more power to you and he's like (laughs) support the event you know so that's that's the mindset of a lot of the people paying for this stuff well that that was my excuse with that um hp pavilion was (laughs) 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 we get it (laughs) I bought this uh, IBM PC Junior from uh, the you know the event holders last year, but I paid three dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and uh, that went to Vintage Chillbilly Shack, who I think has it working now. Too, so. And yeah, speaking of Steve was like, oh, the auctioneer is like a hawk. It's like there are times it's like my nose itched. I'm like, I don't want to scratch my nose because I want to start. I don't want to accidentally. It's your special tell, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I just, you bought I it. Gotta scratch my head. I'm like, oh, oh no, oh no, <laughs> that's your tell. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great. I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their Friday evening to stop by and share some stories and share some laughs. Um, I want to take time to go ahead and go around, assuming that Jeremy is not asleep and is instead playing with his iPhone 14. Uh, I want to go around and a little bit of uh, a little bit of shameless self promotion. Uh, let people know where they can find you. Uh, go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, my name is Jeremy. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Jeremy's Retro Bar. I haven't done videos in a while, but I promise that I have one in the works right now. So hopefully I get that back. Um, on Twitter, I'm at Jeremy's Retro Bar. And that's it. Tom. I'm Tom. I'm on Twitter at Tor Bar, as we can see on my <laughs> thing right yes. there. As written for um, ants, yes. As written for ants. <laughs> 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 I'd also like to plug the Blue Scuzzy project. I mean, you can buy them from me, but just, yeah, you know, there's a bunch of great sellers, uh, Joe and um, other people. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly Joe. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> but it's open source. You can also, you know, go to JLC or PCB Way or whatever, order your own PCBs, you know, do all that stuff. And then the, um, the Discord, the uh, Macintosh Friends VCF Discord, I just posted the link in the chat above somewhere so you, you know feel free to join and you know count down the days till next year yeah absolutely rick I'm rick from rick's random retro you can find me on my website rick's random retro.com i'm on youtube twitter instagram i started tiktok because that's what the kids are doing apparently these days mm-hmm. uh, a little bit of everywhere <laughs> uh you can catch me live uh, i stream every thursday at 8 45 p.m central just a random computer i streamed the uh the quadro 6n i picked up recently i did such a crazy thing as 
testing a mega floppies, recording the audio as they were running, things like that. So I used to do a total random stream every week. You find out all those things. You did a, um, since it's Septandy right now, mm -hmm. you did a, a Septandy supercut of all kinds of games to take advantage of either Tandy Video yep. or Tandy Sound just the other last, night. Yes, yeah, last night, and uh, we did stream the Tandy version of Leisure Suit Larry, and I forgot, uh, it took me like five times with the chat's help to get past the security questions in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't this know who all the you. Wait, wait a minute, you didn't know who's not Spiro Spiro Agnes No, was? no, I'm actually two kids in a trench coat, you know? <laughs> So, That's yeah, great. lots of random stuff. Cool. Alan. <laughs> I'm Alan. Uh, the only place publicly that you could really find me is on YouTube. I am ADY. If you Google or if you search that on YouTube, you will not find it. But I did recently unbox a Sony Mavica FD100. If you search for that video, you will find me that way. <laughs> Garth Eagle. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm Garth Beagle. You can find me on Twitter at Garth Beagle and YouTube at Garth Beagle. And yeah, this is my bird. You all know. <laughs> it's an ex parrot. Steve. <laughs> oh boy. So oh, I am Steve <laughs> from Mac84 on YouTube. My handle on Twitter and Instagram is Mac84TV. And that's where you can find me. I'm probably going to be unboxing this box that was in Tom's van. I already forgot what was in there uh, on YouTube. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much stuff coming. There's a cat in there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'll be I'll be doing a, a video about that. I helped Ron with uh, the video that uh, he'll be releasing about our talk, and then I have to do like a VCF Midwest uh, video. But uh, hopefully, my voice is uh, slowly getting back, so I can actually do that. Because otherwise, <laughs> I'm just going to be like, you know, the whole time. So, there you go. Steve, you should poke holes in that in case it's animal. <laughs> the guy, Adam. <laughs> Hey, I'm Adam from uh, Adam's Apples. It's on YouTube. Um, Adam's Apple, Apple's Retro, I think is the URL. And I'm also on Twitter at Hulkintosh. Um, and I post a lot of pictures of wacky stuff there. I hope to have some videos soon if I'm ever home for more than 12 hours at a time. <laughs> and I have a, a half a MacBook. My gosh, you got it. That's right. Yeah. My half a MacBook. You know what to say? Half a Mac and the. No, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Macintosh. Macintosh, and I focus mostly on uh, newer Macs and like M1s, M2s, Ventura, Monterey, Big Sur, and stuff like that. But I also concentrate on just a little bit older Macs that, that fall out of being supported by the latest operating system. So I show you ways to install uh, newer uh, Ventura, or I mean Monterey and Big Sur on those older Macs from like 2008, 9, and 10, 11, to be able to keep those Macs out of the recycler so you can continue to use them on a daily basis, and you can find me on Mr. McIntosh on YouTube and Twitter and MrMacIntosh.com. Great. Uh, everybody, uh, I'm Ron with Ron's Computer Videos. You can follow me here on this very YouTube channel. Uh, you can also check me out over there at uh, uh, the Twitters um, at Ron's Comp Vids. Uh, you can also check me out on Patreon at Ron's Comp Vids. And I've got a link tree, which is like Linktree slash Ron McAdams. Uh, that has additional links to other things. So um, again, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of your evening, both that showed up here for the chat, uh, people that were here on the stream itself. Um, just want to take that opportunity again to remind people, uh, make investments this week in radical compassion because everyone is going through something. If you have the opportunity to be kind, choose kindness. So thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for stopping by. Have a wonderful evening. And as I say, Apple II forever, but I'm sure these guys say other things. Thanks, Lisa, Thanks Ron. See you all. Thank, thank you so much. Thank Have you, a wonderful Bye, everybody. Evening. Uh, everybody in the chat, hang out for just one second, and we'll talk. But everybody else, you get the outro as soon as I figure out what the damn mouse is.